or we're we're in business now. I think we should be excellent. We should oh, be in business. Your... Okay, so do I click like watch stream or just keep it the way it is? If it's working on your end, then we should be good. Yeah, it should be good. I guess uh, I'm probably gonna pull up chat on my phone. Uh, there's probably a better way to do this, but you know, I'm an idiot. Oh, okay, and and uh, yeah, I guess I'll just I'll just let it ride. <laughs> Yeah, I can. Uh, we'll probably take callers, and I can also um, gonna read you any 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 chat action. So, gang, we're here with the one and only Charles Carroll. Hey, thanks for having me, Brandon. It's a real sweet treat to be on here. It's nice, nice to be back. What a joy, man! And it's a it's an extreme Halloween stream, and I figured who better to give some advice, have some fun, some mirth, than Charles. We have to bring mirth back, and we don't need to be dancing dancing skeletons. We can just be real people talking about real life. Everyone forgets about real life, but we don't. Yeah. So, what do you? Uh, what are your thoughts on Halloween, man? Because I feel like I have an unpopular opinion where I don't. I don't really like. I don't really like Halloween. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I'm sure there's like it's all Hallows Eve or whatever. At least it's a Charles uh, Williams book that I really need to read. But I don't know any of the Catholicism behind it. I just figure Halloween is a celebration of death or. Uh, you know skeleton spirits and i i never really liked eating candy that much it never really <laughs> made me feel too good or going around to strangers houses i never really enjoyed the celebration of halloween it's got a bigger it's got a bigger fan base now than even christmas these days yeah they worship halloween so three years ago my dog died on halloween and that was when oh, I, I, that was what i was like i hate halloween because that's what's supposed to happen your dog's supposed to die you're supposed to break your leg someone comes to your house and molests you at your doorstep Many such cases, too many cases these days. Yeah, it's uh, it's wicked, ghoulish. Um, it's no good, but we'll do things. We'll get some positivity in there so people actually know how to live their life a little bit better. They can take it from the experts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, probably you better than me, you know what I mean? I'm, well, I know how to run my life into the ground pretty well, <laughs> so I can help people guard against that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually our uh, our first the first day we've ever spoken uh, with our voices instead yeah. of our fingers. Yeah, it's been really nice. So it's a joy, man. Thank you so much for giving us the time. And uh, I guess for anyone that isn't aware, I've been I've been a fan of Charles since what 2011 or something. When I, when did Base FX come out? Oh my God! Well, I wasn't around exactly during those times. Maybe a, a couple years later. But I, what was that like? Oh nine or so? Or it was I don't even know. It was a long time ago. When when you know when College Cunts dropped? God, I I don't remember the years anymore. It had to have been 2011 or 2012, something around there. It had to be. Maybe, yeah, 2011, that sounds a bit right, but I don't know any dates anymore. You get to a certain point, you don't know anything. It just dissolves. I'd have to, I'd have, to have notes to, to know <laughs> when the, the, you know, the videos came out. Yeah. I, I know there's that scene of it where you're, uh, I think you're like smoking a cigarette and you're like uh, talking about, what are you saying? Like, I, I had French fries in France. I, I, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know exactly. That's when I had my fingers down my throat. I was trying to puke, but I just, yeah. I can't. I would need... I would need the real thing if you wanted me to gag. Yeah, what a joy. Fingers won't do it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's cool to, to finally uh, to talk. Thanks to so much for having me. I guess uh, to start off the show, you know, we, we're going to do some, we're going to do some self-help stuff. So I'm going to have some fun stuff. But uh, you taught me the word mirth. What does the word mirth yeah. mean? Mirth, uh, to me, it, it means, I guess, having, having fun in the face of, in the face of wickedness, I guess you you could say it's it's about dancing around wickedness and and making a, a mockery of the bad instead of you know crying about it or or joining into it. I think it's kind of dancing around it. That's kind of what it means to me these days. Yeah, like a, a synonym would be like joy or yeah something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, but but mirth is I guess there's maybe some more. I don't know, mockery or something. Uh, I don't know exactly know the words these days. I don't know anything anymore. But yeah, it's sort of laughing in the face of in the face of those who would put you underground. Yeah, people that want you to be uh, humiliated and shamed and, and hate yourself and feel like uh, yep. you're a complete piece of shit. Yep, that's that that sort of infection I won't tolerate. But the infection of mirth, which is greatly infectious, I think that's sort of the calling for most people that do. Uh, I guess comedy on the internet these days because the world is rather dark. Yeah. So we need everyone in chat to get your mirth tourniquets going. Yes. Get them veins pumping and just take a dose. Man, tourniquet brings me back to the Marilyn Manson days. Oh, man. <laughs> you like Marilyn? Uh, well, I mean, there's a few a few bangers that I remember that are good, like tourniquet and um, 
uh, heart-shaped glasses. I don't know if everyone remembers that unbelievable banger from 07. Uh, I just remember a couple of those from Marilyn Manson. I always thought he was kind of a little bit strange to be listening to, but the album art back in the day, he had a sort of a sucking machine hooked up to his bandmates that I always found rather wild, <laughs> rather mirthful. A sucking machine? Is it? Was, yeah. it, was it a rumor that he removed his uh, ribs to, to, to self-fellatio? Or... Oh, no, I think that's uh, Marilyn Monroe that had their ribs removed. Okay. <laughs> you remember that? Remember that one? Uh, no, I th I think it is a conspiracy with old Christopher that he had his ribs removed, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what reason he would do, and there's no real proof. But I remember Marilyn Monroe. There's rumors about that, but I don't know if we should get into that. She was licking herself up. She was licking that bucket. Yeah, she's just you know gives you gives you some more curves when you do that. I was thinking about doing it myself so I could be you know more curvy have a nice curvy body oh yeah dude i developed late late stage scoliosis from trying to suck suck myself god you must have been at it for a while yeah eight 45 pound weights on the feet shoulders shoulders up <laughs> you know what i mean bad man you can force yourself into it yeah i tried you know it's just it's just not for me unfortunately but leaving well, some leave people it, can do it leave it in god's hands maybe, maybe, maybe after, you're not meant to do it maybe after a good fast yeah, I mean, you got to pay someone to do it for you instead of doing it yourself, I think, is the oh, call. Man. I've been there one too many times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see. In chat, we got some people saying Charles is sipping moonshine. Mm. Uh, it, it was Marilyn Manson. Uh, fuck, dude. Some, sometimes I look at chat and it makes me uh, just want to just bite the, bite the barrel. Uh, oh, that's okay. Just deep throat the thing. Chuck, save some curves for the rest of us. You already got a dump truck. Oh, well, I, I, I work with what I got. I have to make the best of everything. Mm -hmm. So how has life been for you lately? It's been good? Life's been good. I've sort of come out of retirement after uh, several bogus years, so it's kind of nice to be back. It's nice to be back and doing sketches and doing doing film and, you know, getting back, uh, doing the palace, getting back streaming. I'll be doing the solo streaming pretty soon when I'm, I guess I'm not too insane. So that should be hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, if it's you, good to be back. If anybody is not subscribed to Charles Carroll's YouTube channel, are you doing Twitch as well? Uh, no, it's it's just it's. Well, I mean, I guess if I could go on there and do some wild movies, that um, that YouTube would kind of plow me into the ground if I tried there. But I just don't know if that's what people really give a damn about. So I'm I'm trying to avoid everything that I've done in the past. Yeah, yeah. Greener but maybe pastures. I'll be back there. But yeah, everyone has to go yeah, subscribe. YouTube's too. a lot better. Got to subscribe to Charles. If you're not doing it. Then, Please. Uh, then get out of my fucking chat. You know, oh, you have to. There's a lot of action with the palace every Sunday at 7 Eastern. It's freaking getting real hot these days. Yeah, spicy. The palace was great, man. I, I enjoyed the, oh, thanks. The, 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 the two that I... <laughs> Is there a third one out? Have I missed it? Or... It's crazy. Oh, that's this Sunday. This Sunday. Okay. So we just we yeah, just had the it's second. gonna be insane. They've been they've been really good, and those are on my channel uh, on every Sunday, and I'll be doing the solo streams again. But just I can't handle more than one thing at a time. I don't have that <clears throat> that special gift. But yeah, it's been really good, really great response, and just trying to do the opposite of everything I've done. So it's turning out to be pretty decent. Yeah, hell yeah. Do you like? There's a verse in the Bible that says uh, you can only serve or you can't serve two masters. You ever heard that? No, oh, yeah, Mammon and God simultaneously yeah you can't do it yeah you can't do it too many people worship uh worship i guess money to a, an even crazier degree than money they don't understand that it's a sort of a an alchemical exchange it could even be an intelligent entity who, who even knows anymore they just print it and it's worth something uh, it's it's weird yeah i like i like how uh you can have a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account and just give it a few years and it'll be worth seventy thousand it's it's great. It's something. I guess it's supply and demand, or something, or it's your fault somewhere along the lines because of inflation, or I don't know. They'll blame it on you. they are always got things printing for them to take care of their debts, but we never get out of debt. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And the banks, they get to the bail the banks out. What a joy! What a joy! So sick this world, but I guess it's kind of always been this way, or at least for. You know, since we've been conquered and occupied, I don't know how many hundreds or, or thousands of years that is, but I think it's it's definitely before we were born. This place was occupied and conquered very thoroughly. Yeah. Oh, big time. Big time. Uh, massive shout out to Eric Hayden, the big dog. Yes. The CEO himself. Yeah. Back in action. Yeah, it's been cool seeing you guys do more stuff, man. 
really cool. Thank God, man. And then World Peace Season 2, he's, he's very prominent in there. You're going to be seeing a lot more of the CEO. It's really exciting to just get back after all these years, after the hiatus. What, seven, eight years? <laughs> it's it's got to be seven, eight years now. I mean, that might as well be 80 years when you consider the internet, but you don't really know that at the time. You, you only know it once you get back out and you're like, what, I'm erased? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I thought that wasn't going to happen. Oh, that's right. I'm an idiot. Oh. Yeah. Well, dude, even seven weeks off, like fucking, I didn't post mm -hmm. a video for seven weeks and I just dropped the Juggalo video and it's like t crazily like 10 out of 10 on the analytics, like way down views. So it's like, you have to stay oh. so fucking plugged in or it just drops. Man, yeah, the algorithm really beats you, beats you down to the ground if you don't play, play ball with it. Uh, it's like every time you're not posting, it's like sucking your dick skin off in just the worst way. <sighs> and the next thing you know, you just, you just have no, no penis. Just punishment. You're just working with a, like a translucent jellyfish. Yeah. Instead of like a like a you know a skin skin king. Yeah. You know, if only we were more like XQC, Charles. Is you know who that is? Is he a Twitch guy? I hope you don't even know who that is. That would be way better. Does is he is he like the guy with the mold food or is that another one of them? Uh, I think it's Asmongold, that guy. Okay, he's Mr. Mold Food. <laughs> he's got the trash everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they all pretend that they're poor. That's okay though; it's their little gig. But XQC, he's the blonde hair. Does he have blonde hair? really quickly, quickly. He's a blithering fucking idiot. I hate to be rude on on this wonderful Halloween, but oh my god, man. fine. He's the top is he American? Guy. Uh, he's from fucking Sweden or something. That's rough. It's crazy, dude. When I see him pulling seventy thousand viewers and just blithering away, I'm like, dude, what, what am I, what am I doing wrong? Yeah, uh, I, you know, I mean, back in the day when I was sort of studying Twitch, it was a different landscape. It was like, you know, Doctor Disrespect was still on there, and this is before, uh, you know, well, I mean, when I started studying Twitch before I went on, I was like, it was like Ninja was on there with like thirteen hundred viewers. So this was a long time ago. And it, it's a different landscape now. I haven't seen it. But, I mean, 70,000 viewers, it, it makes you question yourself. But, I mean, I mean, it could just be a lot of younger people. It could be inflated by, you know, Twitch. Could be their little partnership they have going there. It could be inflated. I have no idea. But either way, the guy must make a decent living. Yeah, yeah. He's French-Canadian. That's what people are saying. Oh, well, he must be. He must be funny. There was something. There was, like, some... Isn't this, like... A girlfriend trying to clean him out, or ex girlfriend. Like there was something with. Well, I mean, I don't mean to bring up personal drama, but I'm just. <laughs> I'm. I'm only trying to like prove that I know who he is because yeah. I'm an old. I'm an old dog, and I stay. I stay away from a lot of things, even when it's detrimental to my knowledge of the industry. It's pretty silly, but I. I've never seen anything good that those guys have done. Yeah, I, I hope I, it's good. I'd love to see one good episode. Danny J. Bauer gave five dollars and said, "Digging Yo. ditches, burning witches." <sighs> Man, Rob Zombie back. Post post white zombie days. Yeah, yeah, those were the days. It's like ninety eight or something like that when that song came out. Who knows? No, when I look at the streamer world, I just feel like I don't. Uh, I feel like I don't fit in. I feel like it's not. I'm not supposed to. I just don't get it. I don't understand. I feel old, and uh, I don't know. I've never, I've never been able to understand anything. I mean, I see the what the the doctor does, and you you understand what he's doing because he's you know he made videos before Twitch that were really good his Dr. call Disrespect. of duty videos were insanely good he's got to be one of the best yes. streamers i mean he's top notch he, yeah he really is he does not mess around he just definitely doesn't joke around that's really the only the only big guy that i'm that i would put on every once in a while and see what he's doing but it's just it's so hard to compare yourself because the, the rules that you go by don't apply to them there can be downtime there can be dead air there can be nothing and it doesn't matter you try doing that you'll be you'll be streaming for freaking 100 people you know it's it's completely different for everyone else i don't know i don't pretend to understand how yeah i would be awesome to see you do <laughs> to see you do a video essay drama videos oh, yeah <laughs> Cover, well you know i covering petty drama and giving your take on it you know i i really i wanted to do that and i still i still am going to do some sort of a i guess a, a mirthful mirthful drama take 
but uh, I haven't really gotten around to that yet because I'm an idiot. But I've done I've done some sort of reaction, some good reaction stuff over the years. But most recently, I guess it was because I tried to stay topical. I was like, oh, it was like the Met Gala. My wife was said, said like, you should put this video on and, and talk about this. And it really turned out to be really fun and really funny. And um, I guess I should have kept on doing it. Well, there's still time. Yeah. Speaking of drama, we have we have Turkey Tom in the chat. You know Turkey Tom, Charles? Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. He's a maniac. That's one of my best pals, dude. He's he does the best drama shit in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. He's uh on his what on a his legend. He has the Tom but Dark channel. He posts a fucking <clears throat> like thirty minute uh drama video every single yeah. day. Yep. Yeah, I've seen I've seen uh I it's great. I don't know if I can pinpoint the exact one. He has so many of them, but there was I don't know if it was Pokemon or something. I forget who he was sort of digging or, you know, checking out. Um, but he's done. He covers the whole gamut. Yeah, he does great. Frost just gave 4 dollars and said, What is Chuck's opinion on moldy food, a.k.a. Asmongold's bloody gum wall that he rubs his bloodied gums on because he's a buck-toothed freak? <laughs> his gums are bleeding? <laughs> I have no does idea. he really have bloody gums? I don't know. He you got to check it. That'll poison your heart if you got your gums are bleeding like that. It could be indicative of uh, sort of like, I don't know, like the, your, your stomach lining and your gut health uh, is very much connected to the gums. So he's going he's gonna to drink some more, I don't know, kefir or raw milk or something like that. But mold, I, don't know, I mean, I guess if you can grow penicillin, then you can, <laughs> you can do that. But other than that, I think it's just a sort of a show. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what the fuck that is. But um, Charles... <laughs> Charles health tips, pro health yeah. tips. Let's hear some let's hear some Charles Carroll pro tips on health. Health tips? Well, uh, I think the gut, I mean, since we've already brought it up, I think your gut is the most important thing you can take care of and you can do that with raw milk and uh, you know, it's some kefir. You can get some grains. You get some kefir grains on friggin' Amazon if you want. You can start m fermenting your own kefir, raw milk. It's illegal in most states because, well, that's the kind of world where we live in. Uh, but I think the gut is the most important thing to focus on because it's really going to affect your brain in some very serious ways. Yeah, they, that's that's my advice. They say it's like a second brain. What do you think about them? They, yeah, it they, is. They ban fucking raw milk. Like you can't get raw milk anywhere. You're, you're getting criminally charged. Yeah. Yeah, I well, I don't know if there's if there's criminal charges that might have been a sort of a publicity stunt, but just I fined. have to leave. And well, maybe maybe vendors or or like the, the the farmers, but not the consumers. But I have to leave the state to get some. That's so I good. do have to leave the state, and I'll tell you, uh, my I got my babies when they were when they were grow when they were. I mean, they're still tiny, but I I gave we gave them raw milk. We did, you know. Well, we lightly cooked some yolk just to, to get them tested out to see if it works. And uh, you know, we started using raw eggs with smoothies, raw raw egg yolk and raw milk. No, no one got sick. And they're built like they're, – they're, it's like they're made of bricks. Yeah. They're solid. So no one ever got sick. I never got sick with raw milk or even raw egg. Never. Neither of the babies. So don't believe what they say about that stuff. They want you, they want you sick and dead, honestly, if you want my opinion on – the medical establishment. Drink some seed oils. Yeah, I don't know. Like, mm. the whole life, people try to tell Sick. me that everyone is lactose intolerant. I suck down so much milk, you wouldn't fucking nope. believe it. Nope, nope, no, it's not. It's not lactose intolerance. It's another one of their tricks where they blame everything on you. Like, <laughs> I, whether it be gluten or lactose, but raw milk, when milk is, is pasteurized, you know, Louis Pasteur, he's burning in hell right now, for the record. I'm <laughs> positive of that. When you boil the milk, it, it destroys lactase, which is a an enzyme that sort of pre-digests and helps you digest lactose when you drink it but when you boil it it disappears so then you're just drinking dead 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 sugar and dead protein like dead dairy but if you drink raw milk look i'm not a doctor but uh lactose intolerance would disappear to nowhere but raw milk is illegal everywhere they boil it and they add they add vitamins to it I'm sure that's for your benefit, right? When when they add vitamins, so they get vitamin D and vitamin A. It's just like when they put iron in all of your wheat. Oh, you got heavy metals getting put into your wheat. Oh, it must be for your benefit, right? Oh, sure, sure. Now, raw milk will cure your lactose intolerance. You could ask my wife. She would be, you know, sickened drinking milk. She's had no 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 indigestion with raw milk. No, no, no. It's all lies. They blame it on you. They they curse you, they destroy you, and then they blame it on you. Blame it on your genetics. Well, you shouldn't have had bad <laughs> genetics. No, no, no. They boil the milk. Get raw milk. You won't regret it. 
Yeah, I've been driving all around for raw milk. The best I could find in Maryland uh, near me is uh, what cream cream top or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is good, but like I want I want it, I want it to be raw, but like it's hard to find. It's really hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, you had. I guess it's like getrawmilk.com or something like that. That's why. That's how we found it in uh, in Massachusetts. I guess it's still legal to do, but Rhode Island, it's uh, Rhode Island's a little bit more twisted than Massachusetts. But there's there should be some resources out there. I mean, I didn't know how to find it. I'm an idiot. My wife found it. <clears throat> I'm like raw milk. This you can't get that anywhere. She goes on the internet. She finds it immediately. I was like, wait, <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah. yeah, it's like getrawmilk.com or something like that. And I I don't know if it's I mean, maybe it's banned in Maryland. Uh, maybe you might have to go to the District of Columbia for your milk. I'm not sure. It's its own little nation state. Uh, they might have it there, but probably not. They'd want it banned worldwide if they could. Yeah, no, it's it's fucking it's dark. We have a uh, ten dollars from MK Ultra Money. I believe that guy's name's James. Shout out to him. Yo, what's go up, Jim? Goaded crossover. Love you both. Excited to check out the new Juggalo video. Rest in peace, Donovan. Yeah, dude, the guy in my uh, oh, new video, yeah. Crip Daddy. You know Crip Daddy, Young Crip. Oh yeah, man, what a joy that guy was. Yeah, he he, you know, he existed to bring joy. <laughs> he definitely did. Fucking love that guy. And then we That's got too bad. Yeah. Four ninety nine from Elijah Caballero said, "Love you, Charles. Your skit, the man who would never be, really helped me process a lot in my life." Thanks so much for that. That was I just can't believe those times. People people don't know this, but there was some pretty heavy puking after that sketch. Really? Because I really rode myself down. Uh, I really overexerted myself. So after the sketch was done, I was I was like sweating. I was in the bathroom puking. I was outside puking on people's tires in the parking lot, going to the health guy. I'm like, what's happening to me? <laughs> he got he got me laying down on the ground with my legs up on the table. But it was I just wish someone was recording. But yeah, that sketch took that took a lot out of me. Oh my god. Yeah, is that the one that's like a, whatever you say, like twenty years, thirty years? How about I'm doing yeah. none of them? <laughs> yes, <laughs> such a psychotic sketch. It's a, it's one of the truest things that's ever been shot. I'll tell you that. So good. And you guys had the John Mouse uh, stuff. Like yep. That the, the song Hey yeah. Moon is is addicting, dude. You guys have had me listening to that for years. It's insane, like how much your your guys' art has just been in, like in, culturally impactful. Like for me, it's that's like awesome. You guys, Tom Green, like my biggest inspirations for sure. <laughs> So good. Freaking Tom Green. Porcelain Lion, no denying. I ain't lying. Remember those days back in, oh, his raps from back in the day? I remember crying, laughing, watching that with my brother when, during the MTV days. Yeah. Oh, I got to find that one again. He did the, uh, the, the Jap remember the, the Japanese like monkey special thing he did? Yep. <laughs> Guy's crazy. Yeah. Like, well, like, what was he doing? He's marrying a Barry more, though? Like, you got to be crazy to do that. I mean, that's like a sacrifice. That's insane. Yeah. I took one of his balls. One of his plums got pulled out after that. <laughs> he wasn't drinking the right milk. He should have gotten it raw. He's yeah. probably giving it raw, though, at least. Yeah. Shout out Drew. Watashiwa Macaulay Culkin. I fucking love that. He had me He had me saying Watashiwa. This is the most random shit when I was in Japan earlier this year. It's fun. Hi, Lord Aaron gave $10 and yeah. said, hey, Brandon, how's it going? Last week was rough, and my grandparents were going into hospice. Can you give me any good oh. advice to seeing that these might be their last days? Big fan, much love. So yeah, advice on someone whose grandparents are going into hospice. I'm really sorry about that, Aaron. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, what a yeah, my God. Most of my grandparents were sort of sort of dead before I came into consciousness. So, but I did. You know, we all get the treatment of of the hospice stuff for sometimes many, many, many years. But I I don't know how to. I don't really. I never knew how to properly deal with uh, with any of that stuff. When you either see your family just get sent to. I mean, it has to be. There has to be full time care in certain situations. But you know, you, so it, in this world these days, you get to a point where you got you got doctors and the health industry straight up torturing and assassinating your family on you, which is always kind of very decent. But advice on that is to is to not um, not blame uh, not blame the soldiers because they're only a military apparatus. It's just uh, it's learning how to pray is uh, is the only is the only thing I can say really to anything at all. Just because to take it at face value is to be annihilated by the reality of this of the military controlled world, and it's uh, it's just twisted. I'm sure you've been through some of that stuff, or maybe you're not old enough yet. 
but uh, it's it's really a fun ride you get put on in the, these days. Oh man, when I was uh, 19 to 20, my grandmother lived at my house and I was her secondary caregiver and I would have to mm. you know, give her insulin and her food, uh, the occasional diaper change because uh, it was bad. She had really bad dementia. Whoa. So yeah, she had hospice yeah. at, my, at my house. It was it was it's devastating. No joke. And then no you, joke. You get to see uh, all your like uncles and aunts that you thought you loved just uh like not give a fuck and then as soon as they yeah. die then they're they're show up with their hands out and they're angry yeah. and begging yeah for, begging for things and furious at you it's it's pretty rough um i mean it's hard it's hard to you know blame or judge people everyone around you is driven insane by you know the news and movies and paying taxes for their whole lives so it's I've I've given up on judging other people because I should just judge myself more. But I I try not to take anything personally because people that people that do things like that they've been driven crazy by the world, and it's it's hard to recognize when you're when you're down in it. Yeah, I don't know. So advice on Sick. what is the advice on dealing with someone who's in hospice? I would say, uh, if if they still have their consciousness with them, I mean, I. I wish that I had talked to my grandma more about like her, uh, her history and her past and her life. Cause once they pass, I mean that, that knowledge it's all gone, gone, man, it's gone. So by the time I realized I wanted to talk to my grandparents about that, they were mentally in a prison where they didn't even know what was going on. Um, yeah, that's, it's a rough ride, man. It's, it's really, it's a rough ride. Cause you don't, you don't, you know, the world stop it like holds you back from maturity. You know, you don't really, it's hard to grapple with these things while you're you know struggling to stay out of a sleeping out of a car or a box and et cetera, et cetera, you know whatever but it's it's really that does that's pretty brutal but hey living in this in this world's rather brutal yeah no that's definitely fucked but i guess what all that stuff that's gone though the, the knowledge that disappears is life really worth. brutal so what i mean what all you can do is really uh, have gratitude for the time you've had and the remaining time i mean what what else can you do besides like self-torture yeah, you, you can't get along, you can't use your imagination against yourself, well, you, of course you can, but it's it's best to not use it against yourself, and everything in this world is going to make the pain and the misery magnetic to you, it's going to make the blame magnetic to you, uh, you know, it's, it's, there'll be scapegoat, scapegoats of these people or that, you know, it's, it's, always, it's always something to bring you away from actual healing and actual uh, mentors that could help you heal, but uh, you see that's sort of taken from you in this world one way or another. But gratitude, it's, it's good that you brought that up because it's, it's the most, and look, I'm not a Mr. Expert of gratitude, <laughs> you know, I, I try my best, but I'm an idiot just like uh, most people, maybe even more so. But the gratitude is, is really an amplification and uh, in like a, a prayer, a prayer or a life affirming, like, thank you for consciousness. And I know maybe that doesn't, I mean, that sounds a bit weird, but I guess I'm kind of making it up as I go along. But the gratitude is really what's going to, what's going to deepen your relationship with, uh, with life itself and the creator. And uh, it's, it's erased from your, it's erased from everything. You know, all people know is suffering. So gratitude is, is what will what will bring things good into your life yeah and it seems counterintuitive like oh my grandparents are dying you're telling me to be thankful but like <laughs> what what else can you do like there's nothing else that you could do my brother died in 2019 and all that has made <sighs> that better is to just be thankful for the time that i had instead of like yes. ruining and uh oh. being miserable that he's gone because that was a oh, that's a real shot God. to the gut what a blow what a blow that is 34 like, years old out of nowhere Oh my God! Sorry to hear that, man. That's that's enough to drive you crazy. Oh yeah, dude, it fires me up. It gets me fired up. But the the I think that the healthier I am, and the more I focus on uh, you know just being uh, well in my mind and spirit, the less it destroys me. Because when I yeah, oh uh, dude, if I go out there and get high and I start getting really buck wild, I want to fucking shoot myself over it. Yeah, you you'll go backwards all the way back into hell if you allow <laughs> yourself to do that. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Uh, ABC gave fourteen dollars and ninety three cents and said, uh, "Are you guys for or against blood sacrifices for the holidays?" Well, I mean, uh, the blood magic it reminds me of a game. They use blood magic, and I don't know. It must be like Dragon Age. I don't know the practicing of uh, witchcraft and black sorcery. I think that sort of comes back to haunt you in the future. I. I mean, I, it's not ethical, at least uh, coming from a layman like myself, but I don't know. I, I guess you'd have to ask some celebrities about that and see how it, it turns out for them. Ask uh, ask Matt, was it, God, what's the guy's name that just 
Matt Perry or yeah, Matthew Perry. Uh, yeah, ask him rest how being peace, a celebrity man. is. Yeah, rest rest in peace. Ask you know Kanye West or people like that about that that stuff. See how it does for them. I don't know. I don't think it does any good at all. Hot tub live stream with Matt Perry. That's awfully insensitive. <laughs> to, awfully insensitive to say, but um, yeah, it seems well, like, it seems like being celebrity. <laughs> Being the the most famous guy on a sitcom is like uh, as good as like blowing your balls off, yeah, and uh, being just molested spiritually. Yeah, you don't want to be a celebrity. That's the worst thing you could ever do. It's just look at him. Look at every. Look at all of them. Look at like. Is there any? I guess there are a few ones that are might be happy, but I don't know. That when the price is the the toll is steep. The price you pay is steep and. It just, you know, you know, the soul selling, you know, everyone kind of knows about this stuff now. It's not like an underground thing. This is sort of mainstream common knowledge. That's the last thing you want to do is practice black magic. You can practice white magic by, uh, by praying and fasting and focusing on gratitude and the things that you want in life instead of the things that you don't. And these guys, I mean, they might do blood magic. They might use sex magic to, you know, to manifest their things. But that stuff makes you unclean. And what do you do when you die if you're unclean in the in the eyes of the creator? What do you do? Would you go to hell? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I um uh, I don't really I don't know, man. The whole it's it's weird being a YouTuber but thinking that being a celebrity is is shit, but I think there's it's definitely like different um levels to it, right? Like yeah. no no one really gives a fuck about uh someone like us too much. No, know? no. Um, Unless you become a problem, or if you have a, like a really big audience, or if you're really good at waking people up, but you you really you really don't want to you don't want to go out of your way to do things to do things like that. It just doesn't make any sense. It only comes back to haunt you. Like being Taylor Swift, and every time she's anywhere doing anything, they're taking photos and videos of her and making headlines about her. Can you imagine? Yeah, I I mean, I can't imagine that. I also can't imagine being stuffed into a suitcase and carried out of my Manhattan apartment like her. Like uh that's kind of uh Is that what she's kind of Yeah, I remember that from years ago. I remember that from years ago. Uh, yeah, that's so that's sort of something sort of a puppet or an automaton or a golem does. So, it's there's these celebrities are not to be envied. They're to be feared and oh, nah, I don't want to say reviled because I mean, Taylor Swift is a great entertainer over the years, even if it might be a series of different clones. Who knows? But um, yeah, that level, that level of stardom is is like you got to be a test tube freak to to get to that level. I, that's not that's not a normal person that came out of like came out of a farm somewhere singing country. No, nah, no, nah, these people are born and bred to be celebrities. Yeah, it's fucked up. What do you think about what do you think about Tom Hanks, dude? Because as a child growing up, I, I I admired Tom Hanks, and then uh, ever since. I don't know, fucking, I was 16 or 17 and started mm -hmm. looking at some internet stuff. How much do you believe some of the Tom, yep. the Tom Hanks stuff? Well, I, I, I try not to remember it. <laughs> yeah, he nice. just, he does a lot of, sh a lot of shoe play and a lot of Route 66 play. Doesn't he do some things like that? Um, it gets nasty. I don't, I don't know. I just assume that these people are all freaks and they're all going to hell. So they just try to have a good time while they can. And Tom Hanks isn't really unlikable, and his acting is, is like, I don't know what to call it, like extreme regular, I, I, not not Forrest Gump, but he's a sort of a, I don't know, like a straight player, like Gene Hackman or something. So I, I mean, I've never liked him. He's always his voice bothers me, but after just some of his weird Instagram things, he's just he seems unclean to me. He seems like a test tube freak. He seems dark, man. He definitely has yeah, Dark one. Tom. But shout out to his son, uh, Chet. Was that his name? Oh, he's got some interesting tattoos, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got some interesting tattoos. He speaks in that like African tongue thing, Jamaican tongue, whatever the fuck. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, is it like Ebonics or? Dude, can I? Uh, <laughs> let me pull up the audio. Can I pull up the audio? Oh, I, I gotta hear the way this guy moves his tongue. Am I able to do that without it fucking everything up? Um, because it's uh, you're gonna hear it and you're gonna be. It's called Patwe. Patois? Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, no. I thought it, I thought it was something else. <laughs> well, I got to hear this guy. Actor Tom. Yeah, hold on. Jamaican. Big up. Big up. The whole he... island massive. It's your boy Chetana. Coming straight from <laughs> you hear that? Golden Globes. You no, let me. Hold on. Let me send you the. I'll send you the link. You can look at it. Look at it on your, okay. on your own. It's really good. It's really good stuff.
What a freak, man. Yeah, these these people's lives. So you don't you don't never envy a celebrity's lives. They're a, it's like a nightmare hell. But Tom Hanks, I mean, was he? Uh, he's just been around for forty years. Like he's been around for forty five years. Yeah, dude. He's in it for the long. God. Time. He does shoes. He likes taking pictures of shoes on the highway. I guess. I guess that's kind of his fetish. So something that you told me. Um... I would say over a year ago, I was really going through it. I was in, I was in mental hell, mental turmoil. Mm. And you told me to um, take a bunch of niacin and hit the sauna. Yes. And it was great. It was great Thank advice. God you listened. Did it. What, isn't it the best? It was so good. I still do it. Like if I wake up and I'm really stressed out, I'll just do a fucking niacin flush and, and just go get in the sauna and sweat it out. The demons. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to do it. It ruptures fat cells, gets THC out of you. It, it, uh, helps expedite the toxins out, you know out into your blood out of the lymphatic system and you know if you're in the sauna especially if you're sweating and drinking fluids that flushes st stuff out of you faster and uh, also if you take a binder to it whether it's some sort of a fiber or charcoal it will uh, magnify the detox effects yeah i thought that was a great uh, a great pro tip oh i did it a few days ago finally i, I got back into the sauna got some niacin going it was it was so good and i did a hyperbaric chamber after that Dude, hyperbaric time chamber, Goku style? Yeah. Well, it's like Michael Jackson. Uh, you know, that's what he used to sleep in, I think. Really? It's like getting getting up and, you know, up and down off of a plane. It's like pressurized and oxygen. And, and I guess you just have to, they, they said you have to do it a bunch of times for it to have any effects because I don't, I, my body doesn't heal anymore. I don't, I got to take care of myself a little bit better. It refuses to heal. So I got to get back into that chamber. How, how old are you? With the Charles? sauna. Uh, God, I'm 40 now. Actually? Yep. I'm, cause I'm 28 and I've noticed like I rolled my ankle last week fucking around with my brother wrestling and I, my, my ankle just hurts. I barely rolled it and it hurts. It's hurt every day. Things don't heal anymore when you get to a certain point. And it's going to be, it's going to be the, the collection of toxins. It has, I would guess it has something to do with the lymphatic system. Like if you don't get toxins and take out and you don't take care of your liver, your body is just going to be busy trying to detoxify instead of healing and regenerating, at least in my non-medical opinion. Yeah. Well, if you're not a doctor, Charles, how can I trust you? I only trust the doctors. <laughs> doctor of comedy, I think I am yeah. now. Go to a doctor, tell them you don't, you don't feel good. They get you on fucking, uh, they get you on uh, lithium and, and Prozac and Xanax. They don't ask any, any other questions. You just say, hey, I don't feel good. They're like, oh, take this forever. Is that when you get off of it though, you'll be you'll have a seizure though. That's no big problem. Yeah, you're try gonna, suing us. <laughs> you're gonna die. It's in the fine print. You're gonna die when you stop taking this. But uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, they're soldiers of Satan. All of those guys. I think it's pretty obvious by now. It's not even like a, a hot take these days. People know the doctors doctors exist to lower your lifespan and to murder you essentially. But not everyone likes hearing that. But it's not even a hot take anymore. Well, dude, and the things that they can do, like you break your arm, cast it, you tear your ACL, fix it. They, they try everything to not do that. I tore my ACL and yep. had to get a second opinion because the one doctor told me I was fine. And, dude, my, my ACL meniscus fully torn to where, like, everything I did, my knee would buckle. And my doctor seriously looked at me and was like, you're fine. He wouldn't do an MRI. So I had to go to another doctor. It's like, you fucking piece of shit. And then, yeah, I had to get major, Imagine that. major surgery. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, well, Ro thanks, Robert uh, Saltzman. You fucking uh, dickhead. Oh, oh, well, pray for his soul because he's going to hell. <laughs> yeah, that's a real guy, dude. Yeah. Fuck uh, that's, Saltzman. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're lucky he didn't kill you. Yeah. You're lucky you're still alive. He would have done the surgery, put me under a fucking 20 times yeah. the anesthesia necessary and just killed me. <laughs> you signed the paper. You signed the paper. Uh, gets an award for it in some medical journal. Yeah, the Nobel yeah, Prize. <laughs> Such a sick world, but you know, I mean, they're. I I can only say that it's not their fault. I mean, people don't like it, and I know that. But you know, you get nowhere by judging people or by blaming people. You really, you get absolutely nowhere. But you can mock them and have some mirth, of course, and you know that they're gonna go to hell. But you, hey, don't have to wish for it. You can pray for their souls. I'll tell you. I think that's a better revenge. Yeah, wishing them well. Sick bastard. Hi, Lord Aaron, okay. the, the guy with the parents. He said, uh, hey, Brandon, appreciate the good advice. I'm going to work hard to get that fight you want. Adam 22 versus Brandon Buckingham 2024, baby. Adam 22 is never going to accept that. Uh, Afina. Is he the porno guy? Oh, yeah. yeah go ahead. Sorry. No, yeah. Uh, he's the guy that uh, like 
fucks his wife and has other guys fuck his wife on camera for oh, money. Oh, that sounds fun. I, I, I want. Doesn't I wanna, have? Didn't you? Haven't you always wanted to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to. Dude, I want to kick that guy's ass so bad. Yeah. I said that uh, we could fight, and he can just imagine it's like a BDSM humiliation uh, Satan ritual. Yeah. Pretend I'm beating up your wife or something, <laughs> yeah. and he's just, he's he's beating off. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. He can, Sick beat off while I fucking rain hellfire onto his face. <laughs> but yeah, Afina uh, gave 9.99 and said, I do not like Tom Hanks. Shout out to Afina. Yo, hey, thanks so much. The queen of raw milk and the queen of making sure I don't die. Yeah, dude, uh, having a having a, a woman in your life that actually cares about you is such so great. Because it's like, I feel like sometimes like my girlfriend cares about me more than I care about myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're if you're a maniac and you're a powerful man... And your brain is too powerful, and it, you use it against yourself. Then, you know, you can really beat yourself up, and there's nothing glamorous about that. You know, start to self torture. Yeah, and then, and then, you know, you torture all those around you. You know, when you're done torturing yourself, you know, it's really sick, sick nightmare <laughs> the mind can be. I love, I love how, I love how serious it turns. That's so. Yeah, funny. it's uh, just, it's just twisted. <laughs> ABC with the 404 said guilty or innocent on the recent hockey event well I mean I wasn't there could be CGI <laughs> uh, and if it's pro sports then you know it's some sort of numerology or devil worshipping so I only weigh in on it as a joke I just assume these things are all, all orchestrated just like all sports are rigged um, you know I, so there's really nothing you can't weigh, on it, weigh in on it too much I just assume that it's just a, a religious sacrifice honestly I really do <laughs> Yeah, I love people absolutely going to bat for the guy about how much of an accident it was when he. I don't know anything about hockey, but I to me the way he cuts that angle and then his f f foot miraculously gravitates to the guy's throat, uh, uh, you know, at risk. Some kind of moral combat. <laughs> dude, it's a finish, a finish him technique, but uh, no I, prayers for uh, that guy's family, dude. That's like imagine yeah, seeing that happen to your sick. dad on fucking television, and then everyone's defending the dude. Yeah, it? isn't it's perfect, isn't it? But I guess that's just what it's. I guess that's pro hockey. That wasn't like a junior league. I mean, I'm guessing that was a pro thing. Yeah, I just I just assume all these things are sort of are orchestrated. But it's a sick it's a sick thing, and and it's the sickest is that you're now you're watching snuff on social media. That's, yeah. I mean, back in the day, or, or even that's a dirty thing. What like happened to, to live to league? watch death? It, I mean, they took it down because that's where people post real stuff. Like if there was, you know, any war going on right now, they would post their videos of the real war atrocities on there. That's why they took Live Leak down because people would, it wasn't, it wasn't regulated. And the chat section wasn't regulated, at least at the beginning. And in the, you know, up until a few years ago, the last real chat, the last real forum there was on the whole internet was Best Gore. It was the realest craziest place where you could get the the most raw raw chat in the world and when they took both of those down you they now you can post your snuff and your in your cgi bloodbath on twitter but it's so heavily regulated if you say something wrong it'll be taken down if you apply something wrong it'll be taken down but it was the wild west back in best gore live league days oh my god you could see a lot of safety videos too not to have long hair um next to heavy machinery uh not <laughs> yeah not to not look both ways 50 times or you'll get turned into a pancake on the road Dude, some of those you know, heavy, not, heavy yeah, machinery crazy. videos, dude, where they're just like, whoa, 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 ragdolling. It's like, <laughs> it's, I wish I it's never saw really, them. I wish I never yeah, saw I them. Wish, I wish I never saw them. But then again, you, you, it's a safety video. I watched, I didn't watch it because I like to see people die. I watched it because I wanted to, I wanted to be very safe around in traffic and around heavy machines. And now I am. And, and especially <laughs> if I'm going to be stealing copper from anyone's house. I've seen people freaking, I've seen people, whoa, n not in good shape yeah. after trying that move. Is it, is it a, I don't, I, I've, I've been a more active Twitter user in the past two months than ever in my life. So I don't know what it was like before, but it does seem like uh, my, at least my Twitter timeline has turned into like a, uh, a gore porn, a tragic yeah. porn. 
type of a thing. Sick, isn't it? Now you're seeing raw death on social media. That stuff used to be taken and banned immediately. You see pornography. You see pornographers and all different kinds of shit on Twitter now. It's oh, it's cool. You can see crazier stuff on Instagram, I guess. Uh, at least I've heard. But it's it's really it's really such a nightmare now. They they sh I wish they didn't take down best score and live leak. Honestly, that was the end of the internet, in my opinion. Yeah. At least you know what you're getting into when you go to those websites. Now it's like I just yeah. Wanna... I just want to see some tweets, and I'm fucking seeing, uh, look what, like, get it the, forced into your eyes. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, like, ines Sick. inescapable, except for, like, you get every, every time you post something on there, there's, there's straight fuck pornography in the comments. Like, what, the, are you kidding me? Yeah. It's unbelievable. You want to see me fuck my wife? I'm like, oh, yeah, Adam, Adam, Adam 12. Yeah. Is this Adam 12 or Adam 22? Me fucking there's not enough. I want to see seven black guys fuck my wife. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't? I guess you know. I guess I guess if you don't, then you're like a prude, or you're like you should you should be better at sex or something. Or uh, you're you an must have been homeschooled. You're an incel. Yeah, an incel. Yeah. Yep. Sick, twisted hell. Everything is. Well, I mean, social media and the internet itself is a military operation. I think people know that by now. So, you know, I mean, it was only a matter of time, and they had to wait till the the uh, the old guys died. The old guys that would be throwing freaking grenades into the offices of these places, they had to wait till they died before they could start putting their pornography and snuff on socials. It's a good thing they did because they'd all be in pieces right now if they didn't. <laughs> we have uh, twenty three ninety nine from Sebastian. I'm quitting weed after a strong relationship. Charles clips on the topic and a Sam clip that you uploaded to your channel got me to this point. Thank you so much for that. Any pitfalls I need to avoid practices to keep up the weed sobriety. Oh yeah, you you have to, and we're all. I mean, if you're if you're friendly with weed, then you it's always an up and down thing. And I tried my best to impart the wisdom of not being embroiled too deeply in in the green the green demon there. And it's just uh, the the only thing I can say is just what you brought up before. You you take some niacin, you take some charcoal, you hit the saunas, you will get that THC out of your out of yourself faster and. I mean, with, with weed, what is it, like one or two days of, of extreme anxiety, and then you're like, I can't believe that I was ever doing this <laughs> yeah. every day. Like, I can't believe it. You know, it doesn't take long to get to it. You just kind of, you just got to keep it, you, could, you just got to do it. But the sauna and uh, the niacin and charcoal is, is your best friend when it comes to that. And, and I mean, hey, if you got to have a few drinks for a night or two, or you know what I'm saying, to, I, I'm I'm just putting that out there, you know. Whatever it takes to get off of, is because marijuana is the is the strongest, the strongest drug there is. I mean, it's arguable if you're on, if you're doing oxy's or morphine or something like that. I mean, I Dude. guess it's it's, it's debatable, but I've, it's I, weed is not a joke. I've done heavy opioid use, heavy Xanax use, heavy hell cr yes, Dude, kratom use, like every day, three times a day for months. Oh. And uh, nothing, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I think there might be something unique, uniquely wrong with me, but the weed is just crushing to my soul. Just like, so, so it's right. Dude, it's strong. Can't sleep. Want to kill myself. And, like, Puking. So anxiety. Yeah, I'm throwing up all the time. Like, Puking. And it's like, my brain is, it was just, so, it's, it gets so bad. And also, not just that, but so I, I publicly quit weed uh, mm -hmm. on, on the 1st of October. The amount of hateful messages that I received. People hate yep. hating me for just saying that weed was like fucking me up. It makes them oh. so angry. If you quit oxys, no one's like you piece of shit. You working for the yeah. big farmers? People are <laughs> I had messages. People say I was working for big pharma. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Well, I mean, it's people that are down in it, and you know, everyone that smokes weed thinks that they can be a highly functioning weed smoker and you know some people do have that of course but most people don't especially if your mind is really strong it's going to work against you it's going to i mean it's it's like how it's like inviting a demon inside of your head if you don't i mean you marijuana is not meant even maybe even tobacco now look i'm a I'm not saying I'm Mr. So sober. I've I've never once ever said that because it would be a big lie. <laughs> but it's it's just the spiritual application of drugs uh, is is more feasible than than recreational self medication. So like full moons or new moons or something like that. There you could have a shamanic experience, but uh, if you do it every day, your life is over. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, bad, Snoop Dogg. Dude. Maybe be Snoop Dogg. You, I mean, why don't you try being be Snoop Dogg or Joe Rogan first, and then you can smoke weed twenty four seven. But before then, your life will be over. 
yeah, I feel like it really jacks your reward system up where nothing nothing yep. feels good. Everything sucks unless I gotta get high first. Let me get high. Nice. I love it. It's, it's yeah, and that's that's really the that's really uh, like witchcraft and alchemy work working in your brain when you rewire all of those dopamine blah 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 whatever you want to call it and you and you and you have to have these things going before you can enjoy something. I mean that should set off some red flags in your head. But you know people people like to smoke and they'll say it's better than drink blah blah blah. But I mean drinking that's out of your that's out of your body and. 24 hours you can also regenerate your liver and you know you can give your stomach a rest but weed I mean, what's that in your 30 days 60 days who knows how long that stays in into your in your brain i mean your brain's made of fat and it's a fat soluble chemical w what are you supposed to do blow your brains out to get out of your brain <laughs> yeah you gotta be in the sauna long enough for your brain to melt your brain will sweat out everything four uh, hours people don't understand it's it's the most dangerous drug out there is is uh is weed and like i've i've i'm not gonna say i you know have i haven't smoked in a minute but i'm saying like i'm not mr whole i'm not holier than anybody i'm actually worse than everybody if you yeah. want me to be honest with you i'm actually worse but uh i don't i don't judge anyone but it's just if you don't have control then you have nothing yeah it is funny i, I literally had an easier time stopping fucking hardcore pill use than smoking weeds Weed that's crazy yeah, but it's like I had tricked myself. It's it's helping me sleep. It's also giving me energy. It's helping me uh, <laughs> not be anxious. It's helping yep. me not be. It's like doing everything, but in reality, it's like causing all my issues. Like for when I stopped smoking, yeah. it was probably like ten days to two weeks where I couldn't eat anything. I had to lather my stomach in capsaicin to create a fire, a hellish fire on my stomach, just so I wouldn't throw up. Oh, what's that? Capsaicin is the stuff that's in pepper spray, and you can get the uh, a topical capsaicin cream. And I, would, I had to cover my stomach with it every second of the day or I would start puking and having a fucking panic attack. Oh, There's man. something called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. You ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. I, I can guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's that. Oh, my God, man. I, I actually know I've heard of such – I've heard of some cases of some friends always puking and they, and they like, get into, like, a bathtub to heat up their stomach to mm -hmm. stop it. So I know exactly where That's you're coming from. Yeah, and I've dealt with that for a long time. I just never believed it was real because um, I don't want to believe know, it. After going through that, it's not worth going back. It's not worth it. Oh, it's bad, dude. It's bad. But, I mean, I, I'm uh, You're sure. lucky. You're lucky you have that reaction. You're actually lucky. You think it's a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, like maybe there's people out there that uh, have they don't use as much or they have a better uh, control over. It. I don't know. I'm a fucking hardcore f uh, freak. If I'm doing anything, I'm you go big or go home. I'm I get just, it. I'm pressing that button and I'm pressing it a lot. But even more than like opioids, that's so crazy, man. That's so scary. Yeah, dude, I got an opioid. People should be afraid. I was 12 when I started doing opioids. Oh, crazy. So it's like <laughs> it's deep in me, and still, it's way easier to quit for me than weed, which is I don't know. I'm, I'm never going back, man. I'm never going back. I'm telling you, I'm never going back. Yeah, dude, it's, never. It's insane. We have Scott Sullivan in the in the chat. He gave he, he donated uh, ten ten bigger ruse and said spent two years smoking four to six times per day. It made me into a fiend, and I didn't even realize it until later. No money, skipping obligations. You don't realize when you're in it because you can. Point to H. Yep. Point to H. Yeah. Sick man. It's the it's it's the smartest demon out of all of them because it uses your intellect against you to perpetuate the uh, I don't want to call it addiction because that's just not the best word. It's because it's a choice. It's not like you have to. Um, it's just it's the green thing is so strong. It's absolutely incredible how intelligent it is. Yeah. It's quite the mistress, but uh, I also was doing dabs. <laughs> I was doing like, oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> There's a company called Puffco, right? You know what Puffco is? <laughs> and they sent, no. They, they sent me a portable dab rig that you just oh, press no. a button and it heats up. And I was doing like, dude, like half a gram of dabs a day, every day for weeks. And you go broke too. <laughs> oh, it kills every you go part broke. of broke. I'm be I'm getting so high I just I can't help but to beat off some 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 fucked up high dab oh. induced masturbation. The demons are working together. They're handshaking. <laughs> they're they're controlling you. Oh, it's so sick, man. Dab. I mean dabs. I mean I don't even know. I, I've been I've been too afraid. There was one time back in the the like the the I don't know the pilot days back in Atlanta. This guy came with a rig. I was like, what's this? Ah! And I knew never ever to do it again. <laughs> 
dude. Oh, it's so scary. <laughs> well, it was it was bad for me because it was like it made me feel normal at a certain point. <laughs> I felt like I felt like something was oh. wrong if I didn't take a dab every two hours. Yep. Don't even get yeah, the two the two hour days. <laughs> yeah, I remember the two hour days. Like, oh, you're looking at your watch. Uh oh, it's time to get normal. <laughs> Can't even get, that's what it's time to get normal. Can't even go to the gym because I can't breathe. Oh God, yeah, it's it's really it's really shocking. But I mean, you're out of it, and I mean, we're both we're both out of it, honestly. And there's a lot of people out of it. You never go back, man. It, you never go back. I mean, if you're gonna do like a full moon thing, but you know, if you're predisposed to being mastered by that, you know, I don't know, man. If it's done, if you do it more than one day in a row. It, that you you I gotta go to rehab it's right over. away. It's over, dude. Well, the fucked yep, up thing you for do me two is two days. I gotta go to rehab. <laughs> I've started and stopped like a lot of times, and some something fucked up in me makes me go back. I don't know. Uh, you'd think I'd be more intelligent because if like, oh, I'm aware of all this stuff, but then uh, something something's wrong for sure that makes me. It's just too smart, and it and it knows you so well. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, man, Wait, you don't want to hang out. Days. We could hang out. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to have fun. You can't have fun. You can't watch a movie. You, can you can't watch a movie unless you smoke me. What are you, what are you, Superman? Smoke me. You know how you love smoking me. You, you <laughs> smoke re- me, Seymour. <laughs> Remember how you loved smoking me? I'll do, but be nice this time. Just one day. Ugh. One time. Just one day, not two. Then I'll be living with you. <laughs> yeah, God, I'm going to be sick torment. I'll be beating you off and taking your money. <laughs> I'll be making you puke if you stay away for yeah. two. If you go past two hours, you're puking. What a joy. Oh, what a, what it's such a nightmare. What a joy. <laughs> what a joy. Aiden Core with the 10. How do you maintain motivation when everyone online is so cruel? It's really hard for me to be productive when I read the meanest shit online by normal people. Excuse my perception of people, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, how do you do it? Uh, I don't. Read. I like it when people are mean online. I'm like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I like it. But then again, I don't. I'm like Mister Nobody Man, so it's not like hard for me. But how do you do it? Oh, uh, well, I have just absolute uh, like people trying to destroy my soul and my DMs. I have some of the most. Mm. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have it, but my DMs are a hellhole. I just don't. I just don't try. Don't read them. Or I also think if I see something I don't like, I imagine like I'm I'm riding my car past a playground of retarded children and the playground mm. on the playground is like 12 kids like fuck you you rapist you suck and i just yep. i just don't stop and i just keep like well, i'm gonna go get we will go get a cheeseburger cheeseburger and, deluxe yeah i just try to think of it like that because uh you know these people they just want they mostly just want attention and they want yep. to be um they just want to be like hey look at me and look how mean i can be or how bad can i make you feel or how much can i just make you react yep yeah, the, the atten- your attention is the only thing you have power over. Yeah, it's the only thing you have power is what you what you think about. Not even what you feel, because your thoughts will control that. But what your attention goes to, it's the only power you have. And if you abdicate the only power you have, then you're like a slave to some I don't know whatever you want to call them in the basement somewhere. That's whatever I don't know. That's praying for your doom or something. That's uh, some guy that's going to hell. Uh, yeah, you can't giving your attention to people that. Giving your attention to people that hate you or that want you to feel pain is is just a, a just a plain mistake. Yeah. It's a mistake. When I learned that it's it's not going to stop, so all I can do is to to not acknowledge it or just not let it uh, into my spirit. But also, if like if your main complaint in life is that people are mean online, I, I hate to be like the Captain Obvious, but like get offline, yeah, and then interact with people in real life because I do mostly like man on the street interviews and people mm-hmm. are a lot nicer then you realize if you stay sit on the internet all day. Oh, yeah. Like, if people tried that stuff on the internet, they'd have no teeth yeah. in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they did the internet stuff in real life, it, would, it wouldn't go. It It'd wouldn't be chiclets. Go. Chiclets yeah. on the ground. So I would just say, oh, like, yeah. get out there and, and, uh, and talk to people and get off, get off the internet. Yeah, you don't have to stay in uh, those places of, of abuse, you know? And, and you, know, you let things in. You know how it is. You let things in. People that are like trolls that are trying to make you feel bad it just doesn't it doesn't do you any good and and, you know life is too short we don't live 800 years anymore like we did back in the day you know you you there's no time for dwelling on people's thoughts that you know they want you to feel pain there's just no time in it there's no time for it 
Yeah, and it's like, so you see something fucked up on the internet, and I literally think like, all right, well, despair is knocking at my door, and uh, I'm not going to let it in. It's a sin. Yeah. This but, Despair is a mortal sin, and it, that's that's one thing that got me out of it, because you can get, you know, if if you can, you, you get into despair, into desolation, it's really, it's really being in bed with a demon, and it's a, it's a sacrilege, it's, 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 it's antithetical to consciousness and to the creation of this world. You can't. It's it's not good. It's like mur it's it's like murdering yourself. Yeah, well, I would say like the opposite of uh, of mirth and gratitude is like despair. Yep, the exact. That's opposite. exactly the opposite. Yeah, one's good, one's bad. Sometimes things are very binary. Some things are bad. Some things are good. Despair. It just never. And it's it's something that's a learned behavior. It's. I think it's a learned behavior, just my most like everything is. It's just it's just a misuse of your time in this world. It could be over it could be over tomorrow. It could be over next in the next hour. You have no idea. Yeah, I would I would definitely just uh just try to tune out as much as possible with the online yep. stuff. See, By force. Yeah. Force it upon because it's like another form of self torture. Like let me look at yep. this shit all day that makes me no. feel miserable. Like people have like eight hours of screen time on their phone. And if yeah. if you ask them like, hey, it, like, do you enjoy being on your phone all day? They'll be like, no. But they do it every day. I mean, I'm I, I do it too. Like, I actually have to have a timer set on my phone to mm. remind me that oh, you've been on Instagram for 15 minutes. It's time to get off. That's good. It's smart. I mean, you you go on for Instagram for business only. Yeah, it's a business platform. If you're if you're a you know content creator, you go in there. Or you, or you like in, enjoying things. I mean, I guess there's some spiritual stuff, and I mean, there's there is some stuff on there, but it's mostly a business a business thing. Yeah, it gets nasty. We have C Keels with the eight eight two five with the nine dollars. Any insight on breathing and how it impacts your cortisol levels and overall emotional health? Look up vagal or vagal response. That is one of the multiple reasons why people get addicted to smoking things. Mm, the gaggles. Well, I know that uh, the the lungs are are the big the the organ that creates the most DMT. So I know that breathing is is definitely a spiritual activity. And I'm not Mr. Breathing. I mean, you know how it is. Like you get you get if you breathe wrong, it's very easy to breathe wrong. And when it comes to breathing, the best the best thing to to study is the Alexander technique. That's like a theater mobility and breathing program for for actors and for really everybody it's just uh properly aligning your spine and and your head resting on your spine properly and elongating the spine when you breathe so you can sort of widen the back and fill all of your lungs with air if, if you have a problem with breathing the alexander technique is what you want yeah i uh there's a what, what's the there's a one of the gracies the jiu-jitsu guys do you follow jiu-jitsu at all charles royce uh, i think it's maybe hickson is that the oldest one oh he was like always talked about how breathing was like very essential in jiu-jitsu and taking stomach breaths oh. oh i know exactly what you're talking about the stuff that they didn't teach right away like they kept it to themselves like the like the the total breathing that would allow them to to bounce around without being out of breath. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. And doesn't like... Moss Wim... Rutten and all those guys used to do that. Doesn't Wim Hof talk about how like breathing is the key to like temperature regulation in your body and shit? Yep. It's the key to everything. And I'm not Mr. I breathe the best because I'm always like, I can't breathe. I'm an idiot. You know, I'm... I mean, I try my best. I try. But it really... It really is the thing. I, I wish I had some... I saved what you're talking about. Like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Just, uh, I mean, it's just not breathing up here. It's mainly getting your belly into it and going up so it widens your back, like a full breath instead of just keeping it locked up here. And also the regulation of it, so not panting. Like if, if you breathe heavy, fast, it will raise your heart rate and not lower it. It doesn't like quench your lungs. It actually raises your heart rate and it'll make you winded even faster. Yeah, I think I, I got to get better at breathing, I think. That's what this is all making me Yeah. Think. I think I have a lot to improve in the in the breath department. I think that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing for any any uh, contact sports like that. It's it's your biggest friend. And I'm not Mister. I'm fighting everybody. I'm not. <laughs> I I would consider it though because I mean I have the fastest reflexes around. I'll be honest with you. I'm the, like you see my quake playing. I'll tell you, man. I'll pull people's teeth right out. I'll pull people's eyes right out of their face if they want to fight me. Um, Faster than well, they can blink theoretically <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> my reflexes are nice and fast but it doesn't mean that you know i can i can 
fight like and you know do boxing but i i definitely it'd probably be pretty nice to do yeah if you if you could pick one opponent to to box who would you pick yeah. who the hell would i box i never i never thought about boxing anybody before i i I guess myself i i I don't i mean how do i answer that who would i box because there's no one really that i'm mad at other than myself so i think i would box myself that's a good answer that's definitely a good answer it's a it's hard to because i've like in the past month i've been in like boxing negotiations trying to find an opponent and get someone to fight me it's it's don king it's definitely hard to find uh good opponents like who would i want to punch in the face Publicly. Who do you do? Like who? I mean, how how do you do that? Like who? Do, boxing sounds fun. I was you know for a while I was like ah whatever you know that's like publicity and I'm like you know what doing like doing athletic stuff and sports is well like fighting sports is is like a, a good thing. It could save your life. Yeah. At this point, uh, the person I think I'm going to be doing an MMA match with a jujitsu black belt named Overt Flow is what's looking like is going to happen. MMA. Yeah. You guys are crazy. Well, I, you guys are crazy. <laughs> well, because I wrestled uh, from third grade up through college. Oh, so. oh okay, okay. I'm like way better at grappling than I am at striking. I'm like pretty bad at boxing and, and shit. Oh, man. Now, that's starting to sound good, man. Yeah. But he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, so like th- realistically he Ooh. should submit me. But uh, I think it's, it's good to take on a challenge that you sh- shouldn't win. I think that's like exciting rather than just beating someone like ice poseidon when i fought ice poseidon you know yeah not, not to be a jerk off but like i was pretty sure i was gonna kick his ass yeah <laughs> like, did you tool him up yeah i beat him in like two minutes oh you tuned him up good yeah, yeah. i don't i, <laughs> I mean i'm, I'm kind of lucky i don't know i would never heard him never saw him i'm kind of i'm a lucky guy i'm an old dog i stay away i'm really good but that's good that you kind of tuned him up a little bit yeah i trained uh, out there in rhode island with uh jason estrada and sam I lived out there for like <laughs> six months last year. Oh, man. You didn't mess around. Yeah, we were taking it seriously. Man, that sounds good. That's, I mean, well, who who's next? Uh, I would love, I mean, Chad, Chad already knows who I'd like to fight. I'd like to fight that Sneeko feller. I'd like to fight is he like Danny sne- Is he like Sneak King from Burger King? Is he's, that Sneak King? He's a sneaky little guy. But I'd like to fight those guys. But the people that I want to fight, they don't want to fight me. They just want to, like, say shit on the internet and then, oh. you know. Well, I mean, it can be a br- it can be a brotherly thing. It doesn't have to be animosity. That's, it can be yeah. just competition. That's pretty much where it's at with the overflow yeah. guy. Because I, I like, it, you know I like you can't him. blow yourself on anger. Like you can't you can't do that. You'll you'll disappear. Yeah. So well, I mean, unless you're Mike Tyson, <laughs> <laughs> that guy. I really admire how much Mike Tyson liked pigeons. Do you know that? Why? You like to feed the birds? That's just uh, that's just an interesting hobby that to find solace in the pigeons. I'd like to be able to do that. Oh my God! He's like right out <laughs> on the waterfront. Oh my God! What's his deal? Pigeons? I think when he was broke and an orphan, pigeons were like his his only friend or something. Oh yeah, because he was probably getting the raw deal from a bunch of the guys over there. He was probably getting a little <laughs> bit of treatment uh, as a child and onward. Um, well, at least he at least he had fun with the birds. The birds will never molest you. I'll tell you that. Yeah, they uh, you, you could trust the birds. I think. Uh-huh. Feed the birds. Yeah, but sp- speaking of punching, if you guys could just absolutely desecrate and demolish and humiliate that like button, me and Charles would have, Oh! <laughs> we'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, hit that like, hit that like. Isn't that the biggest thing? Isn't it like likes and... Isn't I, that I like always, what gets you up there? I always forget to do it, but yeah. If you guys could uh, challenge the, the like button to a boxing match, um, <laughs> make it feel ashamed of itself. Uh, we got we got another five dollars from oh no oops I skipped strawberry donut king with the two dollars said Chuck mm. when can we play Quake Live bless you all hey thanks so much for that strawberry you go an OG that goes way back Quake Live well I'll tell you I got my um I got my uh, uh, Death Adder V3 v- version three so I'm ready for it I can do you know the I can do an eight thousand polling rate on here even though it zaps your CPU but I guess you can afford that when it comes to Quake Live. I, I got to get back into the, into the into the gaming and the solo streaming. I just got so burned out mainly because I'm an idiot. But I, I got so burned out. But it is it might be time for some Quake because I'll tell you, my reflexes like when things fall, I grab them. Even you know, I, 
I mean, I know it sounds really silly. It's actually embarrassing <laughs> to say, but I'm saying my my reflexes are really good. Maybe I should do some wing wing chung or whatever. Yeah. Um, I I got I do need to be trained because I'm literally an idiot. But I uh, at least my reflexes are good. So it's time to revisit Quake, and I got the right mouse for it. Thank thank the Lord, man. Danny J Bauer with the five said, Charles, you don't Yo. want to box some game developers. Uh, I mean. I mean, I guess I, I never really thought about boxing too much, but it's just that it's so pr the, the, the application is so practical in the real world. If you ever needed to bash someone's brains in, uh, it's just it seems like if you're not if you're not training with some sort of martial arts, you're a loser. So I'm a loser right now and I, I don't want to be a loser forever. So I really I really do need to box some people. But who would be boxed? I mean, game developers. Uh, I mean, who needs to be boxed? Neil, what's Neil the Druck, Druckman or what's the <laughs> yeah, it's the, grad, the Tyson, that big, the big boy, McDonald's man. No, this, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know any of the game developers anymore. I, I'm just so old now. Yeah, most people who that makes I, games. Most people that I want to box would never ever sign up for that risk. Like Ben Shapiro, dude. Oh, oh. dude. I mean. Do you think he would box? No, he he's. Never. I like his facial hair. Do you like his facial hair? It's like it seems like it's painted on with like grease yeah. paint or something. I love. I love the way he looks. He's fucking so awesome. I like his sister's tits and her raw. Milk. Yeah, I, like yeah, to drink I, some, I like his sister. <laughs> I like to drink some of her raw milk, dude. Such such a queen, and, and yeah. like to have a family like that is. It's just so awesome, like how your sister can become a meme, and well, she makes herself a meme. It's not like she's oblivious to those things. I yeah, think it's yeah. really funny. But I don't. He wouldn't box. He'd do. Never. He'd do. What's What's the uh, Israeli thing? It was like Krav Maga or Krav Maga. Bak, 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 whatever. Yeah. Whatever their martial arts is. When you're, I don't know. That I just remember it from the Jennifer Lopez movie from 20 years ago. Yeah, I tried to box him, and he would somehow find a way to garnish my wages. Is probably his mm, way yep. to defeat me. Uh, Michael the Boss yeah. Smith with the twenty dollars. What's up, guys? I'm currently taking 250 milligrams of niacin every morning. Any tips on how I can successfully take way more than that? Damn. Well, I mean, watch. I mean, I don't think taking niacin every day is good. I, I think it should be in cycles. And you got to, like, watch your stomach. That'll mess. My stomach hurts when I take niacin. Um, so niacin is definitely acidic and can do something to your stomach. And also, if um, it, it'll definitely hit your liver up if you're taking it every day or, or in giant quantities. It's, it's something you... You have to be aware of when you get older, like wear and tear on your stomach and wear and tear in your liver. It's it's not a joke, but when it comes to dosage, you could just, I just just freaking take a G, take a thousand milligrams. I've taken three. Uh, it hurt. I was on my <laughs> knees. It hurt my stomach. I'll tell you that. But 3, I, w yeah, you can take three thousand. I, I, oh, man. you get diminishing returns if if <laughs> if you don't take it for a long time. You can take two fifty. You can take five hundred. But just double up on your dosage so you get the, the big flush. But make sure you're taking it with food. Don't, you'll mess your stomach up. Make sure you're mindful of your liver. Like, um, if you <laughs> taking supplements, it's going to hit your liver, you know? You said there, there's diminishing returns. I fucking yep. bet, dude, when you get up to, <laughs> when you get up to 3,000. 3,000, man. It's crazy. But you, you got to take big doses. But I don't. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't take niacin for longer than, you know, five days or whatever. I, I really don't. It's like I, a system flushing thing. It's not like a it's daily It's a system supplement. thing. Yeah, it's it's not a daily supplement. And you got to watch out as you get older. Your stomach will get messed up. Your liver will get messed up. You can take milk thistle and stuff like that, NAC. But, you know, it's it's important. You don't want to mess up your stomach. Uncle C's Kooky Conspiracy said... Went to go lift and the lights were out. Stepped in the dog's water bowl. Despair. Oh, wait, I changed oh. my socks. Now we good. Keep at it. Oh, see? You can get over... Nothing is the end of the world. Yeah. There you go. That's the lesson. Happy Halloween I'm on that, man. Danger Salad with the $5. <laughs> Didn't expect to see these two legends come together. Looking forward to the next movie stream, Chuck. Yo, yo, yo. It's... I mean, I, I don't I don't think I could do it on YouTube. I think YouTube will pound me into into dust if I try doing a movie on there. I think I'd get my channel blasted. But I, I mean, I can do it on you know do it on the Gum Road or do it on the Patreon or whatever or maybe even on Twitch, I guess. Uh, but I, I don't I really think it's a big mistake if I do it on YouTube. But I will um, I will do it. It's just you get diminishing returns because uh, 
there are very few people that kind of want to watch you sit down and, and watch a movie. I mean, my commentary is great. It's the best, but it doesn't mean anything. You know, it doesn't mean anything. You gotta, you gotta keep a business going. But uh, I, I will, I will, I need to, because I, I was doing a public service. The movies that I broadcast on Twitch are, I mean, they would have me thrown in jail if they knew the movies that I broadcast on Twitch freaking years ago. It was absolutely shocking, the stuff that I put on there. And I consider that a public, uh, public service when I stick my neck out there for, you know, like fucking $40 a night or something like that, whatever I would make <laughs> during the movie days. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in your chats, a lot of time. Hell yes! It's a joy. Did you see any movies? Uh, I'll be honest. Every time the movies started, I, I, I got off. But maybe that's just because I'm sure I'm retarded. Yeah, not. I mean, just because I like watching movies or commentating, like, doesn't mean that people like to see it because they really didn't. My, I mean, I went nowhere for fucking years. <laughs> I mean, god damn it. But no, I spent a, I spent a lot of time in, in your chat, man. I thought I thought you had one of the you're it, for a long time. Oh, I don't watch anyone stream. You're probably mm -hmm. you're probably you and Turkey Tom are probably the people that I've watched stream the most out of anyone. Damn, which is, thank you. Which is crazy. I got to the most psycho stuff in in those chat. Like I'm, it wasn't you know I, I I mean I read all chat. I would go back and forth with chat because you know I started streaming. It was sort of therapy just to so I wasn't sitting there thinking my own stupid ass thoughts. You know I wanted to get out of my head and get on camera just so I wasn't really doing something really destructive. So it was kind of therapy, but you know the therapy lasted way too long. But that's okay. I'm I'm still here. I'm still alive. But I, I always thought that those the chats I was just the best. But sometimes it's forty dollars a night. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you told me about the niacin, man. And that's also I remember you yeah. talk, talking about some uh, some some heavy deep stuff, and you saying, uh, you know, even if even if you showed them, who would believe you about you know yep. cer certain things? And that that always resonated with me. Made me maybe want to stop arguing with my parents as much as I was. Yep. Yeah, they're too old. They don't understand. And you don't stick your neck out. You don't you don't stick your neck out for strangers or for trolls or even for, you know, you just don't. You have to take care of yourself first. And if you're Mr. Conspiracy, if you're spearheading con hardcore conspiracies like I could have been doing, I did it a tiny bit, but I'm not anonymous. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like a freaking frog face on there with no, you know, with with no address or no name. Like, I can't be shooting my mouth off too much. I'll end up in a freaking ditch somewhere. Yeah, you're going to end up uh, ha having killed yourself. Yeah, and and everyone would say, ah, he was schizo anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we told you, we told you. You know, like, I'm not doing it. I'm not going out like that. Yeah, shoot yourself with a fucking uh, uh, a shotgun, and the blast came 15 feet away from you, and you devised a, some mechanism to pull the trigger. Long arms. Yeah. Long <laughs> arms. Or, or like stabbing yourself 60 times, and your <laughs> wife, and your dog, and your genitals, too. It's a suicide. Everyone's <laughs> laughing. He's a schizo. We told you. We told you he was a loser. God, I'm not going out like that. Yeah. Four shots to the head. He, I don't know. He's, <laughs> he's got really good he's durability. He's had high durability. We told you. We told you he was crazy. Yeah, it's just, ooh, it's so shocking. But, I mean, that's the way you have to play it. You can't stick your neck out for, for, for nothing. But, I mean, I did a tiny bit, but eh, who gives a damn anyway? Yeah. yeah. Uh, weed pipe with the five uh, big mm -hmm. ones. Hey, Charles, now you're working for NASA. Have you got any inside info on Planet X Nibiru? Nibiru, huh? No, no, they, they, they still haven't shown me that. They're, they're still talking. About, they, it's invisible. You know, it's out by the sun somewhere. It's invisible. Sometimes there's an eclipse there. But it's like they, they, keep, they keep telling me to look for the cigar-shaped object. Remember that big, um, oh, my God, what do they call that? Like that big satellite that's like a big space station that keeps flying around. Well, space is fake, so, I mean, it's not really happening. It's just a timepiece out there in the, in the sky. But you ever see, you ever hear about like the cigar shaped big space station it's got like a name like black something or i don't know the death star i'm just mainly looking for that no not death star it's like <laughs> oh, it's just making a stupid joke <laughs> yeah the death ah, that stuff's scary though like planet destroyers but i mean that is i mean when you talk about planet killers that's the it's operating under a presupposition that there are planets which there are not planets i mean you you look at you look at these things they don't they're not solid objects they're I don't know what they are, but they're not they're not things that you can go land on, at least in my opinion. They're not um they're just not. Planets aren't even real. They're just celestial bodies. They could be intelligence, they could be plasma. I have no idea, but space and planets, are you kidding me? We're flying around landing on planets. God, it's you have to be a kid to believe that, like dinosaurs. You have to be a kid. 
Sebastian with the six dollars said, "Any advice on how to pray and walk on the light side?" God bless. You know, I I missed I missed the book. I I tried to tell it to everyone on Sunday, but I just butchered it. The book was uh, "Lord Teach Us to Pray" by uh, was it Andrew Murray, not Arthur Murray? It's Andrew Murray. Lord Teach Us to Pray. Like you have to go to that because it can it can explain it better than I can because I'm literally an idiot. Yeah, my advice, I don't know. I I have a hard time uh like doing the the Bible studying stuff alone. I like to have someone to do it with hard. and someone to talk to yep. uh with. So, I don't know. I went I went to church for the first time recently. Hmm. Uh, and I enjoyed it. One thing I didn't enjoy, a little too much song and dance in the beginning. And I it could just be me being annoying, but it was like this black woman on stage about a cry yep. about how much she loves Jesus. She had an acoustic guitar? Uh she had an electric guitar. Uh, oh, well, at least there's that. And uh, I was thinking, like, the whole time I was thinking, like, this isn't about you. I'm not here to see you put on this performance. But maybe I was just being cynical. But when they got into some of the scripture, it was really good. They talk, They were talking about uh, the part in the Bible where um, uh, Jesus uh, walked across water and he was beckoning the people to get off of the the ship. And then once mm-hmm. the, the one guy did walk across water and then uh, he doubted Jesus for a second when he felt a gust of wind and then sunk down into the water. Oh. And, and it was like a lesson on faith. I enjoyed oh. that. That was good. It's yeah, that that is good. And and the application of faith to that degree is it's almost incomprehensible to to understand. Like uh, that level of faith is uh it's hard to understand. I I can hardly understand it. Yeah, you know what's crazy uh like that the it says it says that the only unforgivable sin is to not have faith. Ooh. Have you heard that before? No. There's like the seven deadly sins. Real. And then there's the yep. un, the unforgivable sin is like hopelessness and not having faith, which is like interesting that um I, I'm not a Bible expert. This is just what I what I read. Mm-hmm. But uh it's interesting if that's true and the one thing that is the the worst thing is to be hopeless and to not have faith. Cuz that's a pretty Damn. good lesson, right? Yeah. So despair is the worst of all of them. Yeah, essentially. I could probably pull it up, but uh I'm sure someone Damn. in the chat knows what the fuck I'm talking about. That's scary because it's it's you know if you live in this world that teaches you everything that's fake and teaches you you know you're to blame for everything it, the application of faith you hit like a like a hard invisible wall in your in in your mind like it's impossible like when when Christ said that that faith I don't know if it was the size of what I don't know but like faith can move mountains it's it's a it's a really hard concept. I mean, it seems like hocus pocus, seems bogus and silly. But if you really think about the the level of faith that it would would be required of you to manifest or to change something in the material realm, and that it is possible, it's something that is it's it's so limited in your mind. It's it's almost impossible to get through. Yeah, I mean, even on a micro level, uh, you know, I quit my job teaching, and I had faith that I could make a YouTube channel. Like the mm. faith was literally the catalyst for everything. So, and that's just it's like the that's, most power. That's just on like a stupid small internet YouTube level. But like, yeah, I think nothing is done without faith, really, unless you fucking no. the luck of the draw type shit. Yep, and it's not hope. Hope is wishing for something. Faith is knowing for something. There too, hope is all hope is false hope. The only thing that matters is faith. Yeah, like wholeheartedly believing. Uh, Bateman with the $5. Advice on low self-esteem and feeling resentful over things not going your way. It's practice. It just takes, like, the faith and practice. Despair is is your biggest enemy. Just like you said, it makes sense. Practice. I feel like low self-esteem, when I've been at my lowest self-esteem-wise, is when I've been also at my least productive as well. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the more productive you are and the more things that you are achieving, whether it's going to the gym or uh, journaling or just any small thing, when you achieve things, I feel like uh, uh, action removes doubt. And, you know, getting on your feet, it dispels the it dispels the thoughts. Yeah. D- action. Yes. And when you're just like stewing and on the mental bicycle is at least for me is when I'm at my lowest mm. uh, self-esteem wise. But the more I'm actually like, a- accomplishing things. Just like goals, like one of my goals this month was literally to eat three meals a day, which is like the most like mm. a fucking complete dumbass can do that. But it's like, tasty. 
<laughs> it's like I literally set that as a goal because I was uh, just fucking up so much in that regard, and it actually made me feel good. Damn. Like, oh, I've eaten three meals a day a day today. That makes me feel good about myself, and that might make you think like, well, Brandon's just an idiot. But whatever that is for you, like whatever you're feeling low about self esteem wise, like what when you can we get this guy to call in, bait man? Can we get you to call into the Discord? We could take a caller, and I don't know how much time yeah. you have, Charles. We've already we're an hour and a <clears throat> half strong, so it's, whenever you want to oh, call, I'm down. We can call it whenever. On this oh, I'm good. I'm I'm good to talk about faith. I need some lessons myself in faith because my faith has, I mean, it has its ups and downs, but it's your duty as a living being to have complete faith. I try my best. I think it's also great to be around other people that have faith because I feel like when you get around like super, super uh, negative people, they just, oh man, they drain you so Zaps bad. Zaps you. Make me start to think like, man, something's wrong with me for feeling good. It's infectious. The disease of that of that void that it really spreads. We well, yeah, have if you want to join the the Discord, and uh, I'd like to ask like what, where your self low self esteem stems from. Like what exactly you're thinking about when you are having low self esteem. Because oftentimes it's not just like oh I'm a piece of shit. It's like oh I can't do this. I can't do that. Yeah. It's like stemming from somewhere. If anyone in uh, chat wants to hop into the Discord and, and uh, hop on a call. Uh, it's up to you guys. We'll probably we'll, we'll go for, you know, a little little while longer. Well, on this wonderful Halloween night, it's such a joy to have sure. you, Charles. Such a joy to oh, have you. Oh, thanks, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I would have been staring at the floor going insane if I didn't get my faith recharged tonight. I really need it. Yeah, man. I, I hope that, uh, like I said, next time I come to Rhode Island, dude, it would be awesome to do some main channel uh, out in the public action stuff with you. Let's do it. I'm down. Some public sex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We can. We can fuck everyone's wife on camera and yeah. put it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. What a king. Dude. Only kings do that. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. Inspirational, even. Um, but I wonder what would be a good IRL video for us to do. I think the. I mean, I've been trying to do the, the, the speed dating stuff for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's hard. It's hard to get people that are down <laughs> to do that. Speed dating would definitely be an interesting experiment. <laughs> I just love the idea of like kind of roping a girl in and making her interested in me and then just slowly like devolving and watching her interest wane as I like whatever I'm talking Devolve about. into your true self. <laughs> yeah. I just started talking about, uh, I don't even know. My, I'm, I'm the side of you. My reflexes and Quake are so good, I'll fight anybody <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Ask her if she has anyone in your life that you want to beat up, like <laughs> punch your dad. There's a lot of stuff you could do. I think it'd be funny to talk about um, having like a scat fetish or something, and you know we don't need mm. to, we don't need to get too deep into it. But I, if I could just smell smell your your loins or smell the toilet, whichever your maybe start off at the toilet and then you could shit yourself. I don't know. <laughs> just being a freak and watching someone that uh, is interested in that's you. Crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's <laughs> crazy. That would be really funny. I've been trying to do that idea for over a year, but I just don't want to do it alone. Mm. Maybe yeah, you gotta have idea. a partner, <laughs> a pants shitting partner with you. But like, think about anything you could say to someone. Like, a bl like, uh, blind dating is insane. And they have them in every city every weekend. Hmm. Speed blind dating. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean that's what it is. The speed dating, where it's like you have three minutes to tell someone whatever you'd want to tell them. <laughs> you just start. Might be pretty good. Treat it like confession. Some fucked up, made up confession. <laughs> Just be the biggest freak you can in the world. Yeah, but you got to start off the, the first twenty five percent. You're like being so sweet and like in in endearing, and then just flip. That's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Or uh, have you ever have you done much? I mean, I've seen the the last thing I remember is like you and Sam at uh what was it Harvard. Did you guys, or you went to oh, Yale? Yale. Yeah. God, that was, wow. That, that was crazy. That video was Long great. minute ago. Yeah. I'd love to see some on the street Charles. Damn. It's been so long since I've done anything and I never did it well. Like I'm not, I've like, I'm not good at it, but I can practice. I think even just roaming around Kennedy Plaza for an hour and fucking talking to the, the Kennedy Plaza dwellers. I think I could get comfortable with speaking to people in public like that. Strangers. Yeah. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Oh, we have Bateman. Yeah. Let me uh, let me let me drag him. Oh. Over. Bateman. Can you hear Hello? us? Hello. Yo. How you doing? Oh, brother? hey. Can you hear him, good Charles? Oh yeah, I can. 
Yeah, I just, uh, I got it confused because I was watching the stream and then, <laughs> never mind. Um, it's good to talk to you guys. It's good to talk to you. Charles, you can hear me, right? You can oh, I sure can. Thanks for coming in here. How you living? I'm all right. I actually, um, you talked to me a little bit over Discord once I was in your, uh, in your server. I appreciate that. You talked to sure. me for a little bit. So you absolutely, you, man. You, I try. You had donated about uh, self-esteem and feeling resentful towards you know things not going your way, right? Yeah, I was just that's just the way I was feeling today, I guess. Um, uh, I don't know if there's any like what what do you want to know? Well, like when you're when you're feeling uh, low on yourself, uh, what kind of thoughts are you having? Um, if you like hyper focused on your inner dialogue, what would you be thinking? Just, you know, that I'm not, like, good enough or uh, things are passing me by. I'm not getting anywhere. I think what you said about not accomplishing enough was you hit the nail right on the head because it's like some days you feel like you get nothing done and it, it, you feel like an idiot for wasting, like, for days and then, uh, like, months go by, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Time will No, oh, yeah, it's a real thing. Big time. Well, it's yeah, a like... demon, man. It's, it's like bad thoughts are a straight-up demon or learned behavior, sabotage from either teachers or, you know, parents' bad habits or whatever. It's all... It's, you, can, you can look at anything that makes you feel bad or... Well, I mean, sometimes it's good to feel bad if you have to have alarms. But it's a lot of, a lot of times these thoughts are straight up from a demon. Yeah, I, th I think the problem is uh, when those alarms, when your response to them is to, like, feed into it. Like, sometimes yep. you, it's, like, comforting just to, just to be in that state where, like... like to make it bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feed it. You know something no, else? no, it's, that's the demon. Something I found out was really interesting is that, uh, and then I'm not saying that like you're narcissist, but I think everyone has a like a, a you know a twain of narcissism in them. Narcissism can be like both ways. Like you could be negatively narcissist. You know, have you ever like found yourself thinking like, oh, my life is so uniquely fucked up, or I'm so yeah, yeah. That's you're like just a, focusing on yourself too much. Yeah, uh, that's like a fucked up like uh, negative narcissist like thought that uh, I mean I I've done that where it's like I'm just p pitying myself and thinking, oh, it's so bad for me, but I feel like it's some yeah. fucked up thing where I want to be special. I'm like specially in the way that I'm fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real thing. It's it's always a trick. It's always it's always a trick. It's never real. It's always something that wants you to feed it. It's a demon. That's why it's like it's comforting to feed the thing or it amplifies your own importance or something. If it if it feeds and it can never be full, you know it's a demon. Yeah, insatiable. Yep. Yeah, I mean I really got to just focus on, like you've always said, just controlling your thoughts, like not thinking nasty things all day like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, are there any uh, goals and things that you have set that you are like aspiring to, Bateman? Well, right now, um, I just finished college not too long ago, and I'm not really... Nice like... done. Well, thanks. I... That's the other thing. I, I have low self-esteem, like, uh, because I finished college, like, a year late, but, like, most people don't even finish college, apparently. Yeah. Well, um, you're, in a, you're in a crazy transitional phase of your life, post-college. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not... Because I, I have, like, no idea what I really want to do. You know what I mean? Because you guys probably... Uh, a, a real job, like, isn't the most appealing thing to uh, to most people. Or maybe some people, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's hard, man. But just, just don't, don't feed those thoughts. At the very least, you can't be sabotaging yourself because this, this world will sabotage you enough. You don't need yourself working for the world to destroy your destiny even further. Yeah. Um, well, I guess, uh, the thoughts aren't real. Yeah, and one question I want one question I want to ask like are there people you look at Bateman where you're like, "Oh, his his job is so good or his yeah, you know, his career is so good." Like when you think of those thoughts about people or do you have thoughts like that? And if so, what are they doing? Um, I don't know. I don't I don't usually get like too jealous 
of people. That's one thing I definitely don't do. Um, sometimes it's like inspiring, like um, like you guys or or Sam's like whole crew there. They're all like my age, and sometimes I get a little bit of jealous like that. I'm thinking, damn, you know, <laughs> they're they're having all this fun over there, and uh, what am I doing? You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, no, I felt that about YouTubers before I started. I was like, oh, fucking look at this guy, man. He's having he's having such a good time. And that, that's why I wanted to try it. Because after six years of schooling and then a year of uh, of teaching, it was like, you know, I'm going to, like, I'm either going to jump off a bridge or I'm going to try something else. Uh, and that's why I tried YouTube. And then now I don't, uh, I don't know what I would do if I didn't do YouTube. Maybe regenerative medicine sales. Maybe. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Uh, it's like, you know, non-fetal stem cells, PRP injections, Wharton's jelly, like things that help you heal. Oh, okay. I need that. Yeah. That sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, I want. I think after YouTube, it would be cool to do. I No, nah, this doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, so I think, I mean, maybe it's content creation could be something. You could always try to up your editing skills. What was your degree in? Uh, it was computer programming and uh, information systems. That's a fucking Ooh. pretty good one. Like yeah, that, but it's it's like a pain in the ass, you know what I mean? There are definitely some applications to it. I um I'm not a I mean, I did a little bit of computer science back in the day, but yeah, it's it's I guess you could f see what is applicable to either content creation or comedy. Like I know it, whether it's games or well, I'm I'm just off the top of my head. I I know there's an application for the things that you know that maybe aren't directly related to the degree. It's mainly mainly being a maniac in a good way. It's like getting involved in these things at a young age. It's it's not exactly about being prepared for them. It's being a straight up maniac. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just thinking out loud here, you know, just yeah. these are probably not yeah. things you usually hear. Like uh, it's usually it's usually a maniac mindset and a willingness to sacrifice normalcy to contribute to some insane content. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely, um, I've thought about like making stuff because my friends always said I was like, that's the one thing people always say about me. Like you're, you're funny. That's, that's the one consistent thing. I probably don't seem very funny right now because kind of came in kind of nervous about the, uh, you know the serious sort of self-esteem thing but uh sure, it's chill though yeah yeah but You're good. it's it would just be it's hard to like put yourself out there especially when you don't really know what uh, what you would do even yeah but i always think like uh because i hear that a lot like oh, i don't want to put myself out there but when you're not when you're not doing anything i mean you're still putting yourself out there amongst people who know you and yeah. I mean, does it it's, feel good to be like, oh, I don't do anything. And that's my version of putting myself out there. Like, I'm not out there. Just people that know yeah. me know I don't do anything. It's it's like um, if if I put a video out and it got like no views for like 10 years, then I would be embarrassed. But if it got like a thousand billion views or whatever, uh, then it would be good. But the content is the same. You know what I mean? I don't know anyone who's worked 40 hours a week on YouTube for three years straight. I mean, like genuinely 40 hours a week and they didn't have success. Everyone stops before then or they just don't put in the time and the, and the effort. Yeah, it's I know a lot of people, like that. a lot of people work 10, 15 hours a week on YouTube for years and get nowhere. But if you really did 40 hours and you really applied yourself for years, there's no way it's not going to work. For me, it worked after two years. That's when it clicked. But in the two years prior to that, it was no less than 40 hours a week posting every single week, traveling full time. Um, I think you can do it, man. I think I literally think anyone can do it. That sounds people think that's like delusional, but there is nothing unique or special about me except for the work that I put into content creation. I don't think I'm uniquely creative or uniquely funny at all. But I mean, is fucking Mr. Beast or is XQC or is Aiden Ross oh, yeah. or is these fucking idiots? Look at the people who are doing it. Why could they do it, and not you? <laughs> it must have been point. just consistency, like you're saying. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think it's consistency. You just got to be a beast. Yeah, and I would be Mr. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that guy, you know, he's better. he's special. <laughs> he's actually has a unique traits about him. You know, he's next level. He's a strap god. Yeah. 
But no, I think there's definitely people that are uniquely skilled, and that's why they do good. But there's the vast majority are not uniquely skilled. They just are consistent and put in the time and the effort. It's like uh, you know Stephen Pressfield's the the War on Art, that fucking book. Oh yeah, I was listening to that not too long ago actually. That's like the message of that is like you don't have to be some creative savant. You can just put the effort and work in and be consistent, and it'll probably happen. Yeah, that's that's what most uh, good creative people say. They just do it consistently. Uh, for like this amount of hours no matter what every day yeah and uh it sucks but you have to be like, plugged in all the time me i have over four hundred fifty thousand subscribers and my videos were doing really good i just took seven weeks off and my new video is like eating shit so it's like it's crazy okay, you gotta just it's... keep fucking oh man <laughs> oh man that's like any job though right you can't take fucking weeks off you can't take seven weeks off nope. any job you get oh, yeah, that's how everything is now you need like consistent uh just pumping out Ooh. shit I gotta get consistent. Damn. Well, you you got the uh, the palace now. Palace rules. That's consistent. That is consistent. I'm looking forward to more of that. Thanks. It's gonna oof, it's gonna get crazier and crazier. Yeah, I'm ex I'm a fucking excited for that. What a joy. You had me and my me and my best friends texting each other about that, Charles. It was fun. Hell yes. Have you seen the Charles? Have you seen the Charles's palace? Like fuck yeah, it was good. It was really good. When when it's I good heard hear. Eric say um, that it was gonna be like Star Trek. Um, and then I saw the first like episode, the intro about Antarctica. And after watching all your streams, I was like, I knew exactly, uh, what it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's turning out, it's turning out good and it's consistent. So thank God there were no weeks taken off and it would be nowhere. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and I guess some people can take time off and, uh, I mean, I'm sure I'll be fine with the time that I took off, but I'm planning on being really consistent, but it definitely hurts to not be consistent i feel oh it's especially the worst thing people, especially when you're yeah. not established i mean imagine if you didn't have people seeking you out and looking up your shit and then you took time off it's like you fully just dis dissolve disappear yeah but well you have any other questions bateman or any other th things um no not really well do you have any goals that you want to set for yourself as far as like what are you going to be working on to combat that self-esteem shit uh, I don't know. Hit the nasium, maybe? Get up in that nasium? Mm. No, no, I work out. I work out uh, like four times a week. Maybe up it to seven. I'll break my back. <laughs> <laughs> Knees will be the backwards yeah, pretty yeah. soon. So, Well, dude, I appreciate you calling in, man, and giving us the, giving us the Thanks time. Thanks for coming in, man. OG Bateman. Yeah, yeah. Wait, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, happy Halloween, brother. Oh, yeah, you too. Okay. Enjoy. Look at that. Damn, classic. Do I love uh, uh, American Psycho? What a movie. Oh, I, it's come back around. Fell out of favor for a long time, but now it's back around really strong. I got to see it again. You like that one? I, it's been a long time since I watched it, but I know it would be a joy again to revisit instead of like being burned out with Christian Bale over the years. Yeah. I like his movie set freakouts. That shit's fucking oh, It's the best. <laughs> it's so what a god. <laughs> Screaming it so much. The guy the guy's moving lights during a shot. The the DP's fixing lights during a shot, during a take, he's moving lights. Like it's it's crazy to do that. Yeah. Crazy. You fucking amateur. Yeah. Uh, to do that is insane. Yeah, that is crazy. It's it's psycho to do that. What about uh, Taxi Driver? You like that movie? Oh, yeah. Taxi Driver is always pretty relaxing. <laughs> you know what's fucked up? That's my favorite movie, and I've watched it well over 100 times. I fucking love it, dude. Oh, it I got a good rip for you, then. I got, a nice, I got a nice rip for you. I got a good version of it. Really? That you can enjoy. Oh, yeah. Looks really nice. What is That's it? That's the best movie, the best soundtrack. The, the score for it. Bernard Herrmann. Oh. It's unreal. That movie, I mean, it's pretty psycho, but it's it's just it's just excellent. It looks really, really good, especially if you got some film grain still in there. If they didn't clean it up on you, it's really a splendid movie. Really, it's pretty psycho, but it's got Peter Boyle. I mean, it's got freaking a lot of classics. Harvey, freaking everyone in there. Yeah, Peter Boyle talking I about how like, uh, like what you do for your career is like what you become. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like that. Um, but yeah. We got Marty in there almost ruining the movie with him sticking his face in the movie. 
<laughs> him talking about putting the the gun up of a <laughs> girl's pussy. It's crazy. He's in the movie. Yeah. Hey, what, what are you doing in here, Marty? Yeah, I uh, when I first watched that movie, well, uh, you remember Freddie Gray? It was a guy Freddy in Baltimore Gray. that the cops arrested, and he like died in the back of a van. So everyone in Baltimore like smashed out uh all the shit, just smashed everything. Oh. But I was living in Baltimore when that happened, and I remember I, I shopped at Safeway, and uh, they destroyed my local Safeway, and it was just like scary and fucking and just fucked up. And I watched Taxi Driver, and uh, it was really nice. It was really brought cool. you back. <laughs> it made, yeah, brought me back to Earth. I'm well, due for watching that again, though. It's been dude, a long time. I'll imagine 19 year old me just fucking high on pills, driving around thinking one, <laughs> <laughs> one day a real rain. Yeah. <laughs> Right to the porno theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> I'm just so fucked up, but angry at everything. That movie really is, it really is a good thing, and it holds up really well. And it's just so, it's so crazy to put that movie together and make. Like, you, it's so crazy. Oh man, <laughs> it's so good. I love that movie. That's a good choice. Ron C with the ten dollars said, "What are your guys' thoughts on the '90s remake of Cape Fear?" I haven't seen it in 30 years. That was Marty too, right? I mean, I don't know. Robert Mitchum. You can't beat Robert Mitchum, but I'm sure the new... I'm, I just haven't seen it in 30 years. I don't remember. Yeah, I haven't either. Well, shit, let's, take, let's just uh, rock one last caller, and then we'll uh, Halloween wrap this mofo up, yeah? All right. Swag. Robofish. Can you hear me? Yep. Yo, yo, yo. What's the word, Robofish? What's going on, man? Uh, hold on a second. Let me grab some water real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, man, he's grabbing water. He's turning it's his Halloween on. special. Mm. It's freaking. Right, he might be. Uh, oh, there we go. Let me uh, let me tell you what's uh, been going on a bit. Well, give us the rundown. All right. So recently, I uh you know, ended up uh, fucking one of my long-term internet friends, and it really screwed my life up for quite a bit. Mm. Damn. What, kind of a kind of a weird story. What screwed, uh, like, what, what became screwed up when you, when you did that? Well, it was uh, the day after I flew home. Uh, like, her best friend from high school ended up uh, killing himself. Like, and uh how's that is that just an ancillary thing or that's connected um it's sort of connected Jeez. uh but uh yeah pretty much uh it's like you know couldn't really talk to her too much like after that and you now she like about a month later you know she ended up getting back together with uh, an ex and I was cool with it for a while but then she started to like you know message me again the way you know two people in that situation would hmm. and uh, that, that uh, just kind of fucked with me a bit and didn't make getting over shit you know too easy damn if that, if that makes sense I think so so maybe you're having yeah. rela maybe relationship issues. Is that what's going on here? Uh, I mean, sort of. I mean, I'm just. It took me a while to get over, and then I did, and then I ran into a similar scenario recently, and it just feels like shit's just kind of been crashing down. See. Uh, maybe I should go a bit more into detail. I guess. Or we could simplify it. We could uh, simplify it. What do you What do you think is like the root issue here? Is you're just you're a, you're a pussy getting guy, and then, and then where's it going left? Uh, where where it's going left is like, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, my past relationships haven't like ended too well. I've always had like self confidence issues because of the way those have ended. Um, you know, first girlfriend left me. For a dude who was uh, selling her pills. Oh. And, uh, you know, the second one cheated on me, and I just decided, fuck it, I'm just going to, you know, do the whole 
tender sluts thing for a while. Mm-hmm. Bang mm-hmm. some of those out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's like kind of what I started to do after you know things between me and her set me and the girl that I met on the internet soured. Um, you know, uh, when people keep sending you messages like that, and then you know, there's nothing you can really go out and do about it again. Not that I would, anyways, because of the some of the shit he's, he's told me about her, you know, fucking her ex from the army behind the new guy's back and still, you know, sending me shit. It's like, Ooh. you know, why, why'd I even, that, that's not something I want to be involved in. Sounds like you should uh, block the girl if she's doing that. Yeah, like, it uh, sounds like, uh, Jack- yeah digital text yeah porn on you making you want to do force the stuff. thoughts out of your head and, and disremember the whole situation and they never talk yeah to her again. i'm just deciding that you know you know it's cool catching up with her like every once couple no it isn't like <laughs> like once every few months because like you know we've been like friends for a long time and shit mm. and you know it's cool to have someone to just across a the country to just like shoot a fucking text to every once in a while and catch up. Get a pen other pal. than that, like get a, fuck get a, it. Get a pen pal if you need that. Yeah. Yeah. Or you'd be better off literally going on chatterbait and fucking giving sh- shekels to a, a young, a young chatterbait slut, man. Yeah. I mean, right, <laughs> writing to someone in prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be better. <laughs> but, uh, well, dude, I don't want, I don't, you know, I don't want to hold Charles too long. Do you have any other closing yeah. st- statements, questions, comments, concerns? Yeah. Just the reason it's been like getting me, down bad now is because like fucking you know i ended up uh getting together with someone new and then they fucking after a month they fucking cheated on me and it's like and then uh, you know, i'll wait off the same fucking day ooh, it's just been down the bad run yep oh <laughs> any advice on people cheating on you but, charles damn um i guess you, i guess you just have to do your best to block it out of your mind and and erase it and replace it with uh with some with some new things that are are constructive in in your life because you know it's something bad that happens to you depending where you're at in your mind it can really keep you in a bad place and and stop your life for a long time if you stay if you stay in that mode and it's just it's better even than with dealing with things just like throwing them out of your head i mean it's easier said than done but Um... it it really is the play yeah, that's, uh, let me tell you, like, what helped me, like, first start to, like, get out of it. Uh, it's really faked one li- one night. I don't, uh, you know, do weed too often, but, you know, every once in a while. Uh, listen to a song I hadn't listened to in a very long time, uh, Don't Save Her by Project Pat. And I was like, damn, Ooh. am I really that much of a bitch? Yo. Yeah, there you go. Can't turn a hoe into, into a housewife. Very good. Yeah, it's a good mm-hmm. it's a good song to put on because it reminds you that if you stay if you stay in a weakened state, then it'll it'll make you weak everywhere in life, and then you'll just keep repeating the same the same things potentially. Yeah. Well, Robo Fish, I appreciate you calling in, man, and I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. Yeah. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Too, good Brandon. luck. All right, thanks, man. Thanks, Charles. Adios. Well, Charles. Hell yes. You know, took a call. Took two calls. We had a great chat. I really appreciate yeah. your time. Um, I'd like to close it off just by saying, everyone in here, if you could please, please go watch Charles' videos. Subscribe to him. Oh, thank you. Show him support. He's one of my favorite content creators, genuinely. And uh, who knows where I would be currently without the uh, Charles Carroll MDE uh, inspiration. Thank so. God, Brandon. Well, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. This, these things they bring me back to life even more, and I really do need that. I can get sort of twisted sometimes, too, all the time, actually. So it's good to be brought out of it. Hell yeah. And we'll do one last uh, super chat here. Sebastian with the $5 said, I'm currently into Dispelling Wetico, which is great, and have the Space yeah. Trilogy on hold. Got any more of them? Sacred text for me. Good night, everyone.
Man, yeah, the spelling with Tico is really the most insane thing ever. I got the the sequel to it. I haven't. I forgot to keep reading it. Just it was making me sick because the spelling with Tico is enough. That's just mainly just the ins the infectious mind virus that is perpetuated by abuse and by uh, I don't know deception, I guess. So, but other than that, other other than that classic, you know, I I would I would read Charles Williams. I would the place of the lion. I thought was was there was something special about it i'm not smart enough to articulate on it i guess i have to read it again but i would consider doing some charles williams for the next step yeah there you go hell so, yes so i don't know if the, i just posted a link into chat it's charles channel uh go watch thank the you palace go like it go comment on it and yes, yeah, every sunday we appreciate you guys being here look forward to the, the next palace coming in t minus five days and uh, happy Halloween, you guys. We will see you next time.